All right, all right, all right, guys. We're going into Masters 3 for Bronze to GM. And we're going to be continuing some of the things we learned in Diamond 1. And for some of the builds, we're going to be going in quite a different direction. So let's tab out to our document and let's take a little look-see. So first things first, guys. PvP, we want to do the same opening, this really safe Sentry Stalker expand where we use the Hallucination to expand um, safely My and man. check what's going on. But we also want to make some other really, really nice changes where we're actually going to be macroing up rather than doing the two base blink timing. So we'll get the forge. We'll get a third base. We'll then add a third and fourth gateway, add a robo so we can get detection, add more gateways. And we'll also be building a few more sentries as well. So we'll try to get up to three sentries for nonstop hallucination scouting, low tech, lots of expanding, lots of mobility and map control. We've also got a higher tech style, very advanced, which we'll probably save for Masters 2 or 1, same opening. But what we're going to be doing, sorry, I guess I should explain first of all, Masters 3, Mass, Zealot, Stalker, basically all game. Lots of expansions, so expanding at a fast rate, eventually adding Blink DTs to add extra power to our backstabs. But basically saying, let's manage a big economy, big map control, lots of Zealots, lots of Stalkers, roam the map and use movement positioning and really understand how to move a big mobile army around. And as we go higher, we'll do the six gas transition. So rather than staying that low mineral, low tech zealot stalker style, we'll go to six gases, we'll add immortals and archons, we'll go up to disruptors, fourth base, and we'll play a much more solid, straight up the tech tree, working from one step to the next very methodically and getting up the splash damage and all that sort of stuff. So that's going to be PvP. PVT, we're going to continue the same build from Diamond 1, exactly the same. Now this is something where I know people are going to be, ah, oh, what, what the hell, pig? What are we doing? Well... It's a fantastic build. What we're going to work on, we're going to work on the gas transition. So I want to put a few more games in doing this as just a mass zealot build, but then we're going to work on this more as a transition. So rather than just going 12 gate, 100 zealots, four bases of minerals, we will actually drop a whole bunch of gases at some point, right? And I already wrote that down up, atop, so, uh, up above. So if we go into our diamond one pvt i've already written down these notes on the gas transition so that's what we're going to work on okay so the, the gas transition off of that build so it's the same build order i guess i'll just copy paste this down so you guys can see it and that's going to be absolutely massive okay last but not least is pvz i want to do the same sort of immortal arc on zealot attack but we're going to do this off three bases so it's going to be 60 to 66 probes and we're going to open up with stargate oracle because a lot of people have been saying where's the stargate opening versus Erg? stargate's the best i want to play stargate so we're going to be doing that and that's something i don't have a lot of experience with i did beat a really high level player the other day uh making it up on the fly and doing it and i was like i can't believe this worked um, because it was super sloppy and scrappy. So it's going to be a case of me learning to optimize the Oracle opening, but essentially we're still going to have a very clean timing attack off of the very heavy Oracle Adept Harass that we start with. So this is going to be a really cool way to play PvZ. So guys, let's get straight on into Masters 3. Let's go. And guys, we've got a Protoss versus Zerg versus Bullia. Now remember guys, we're still looking for a big Chargelet Immortal Archon attack, but we're going to be doing it off a Stargate build. So what is the main difference with a Stargate build? The literal only difference is you just put one extra guy on gas early so that it's a little bit easier to afford. That's not the only difference. I'm exaggerating. No, it, it does change the opening a little bit. I mean, it's it's for, for all intents and purposes, it appears the same, the opening in PvZ. But because we're going to be going Oracle, it is more gas heavy. So once our gas is up, we'll pull one worker off minerals onto gas. So we'll be on 15 rather than 16 for most of the early game, guys. Uh, other than that, I think the main other thing is that we will delay our warp gate just to make sure we can get that stargate started. And the reason is that stargate costs 50 extra gas over your uh, robo or twilight tech structures. So this, this, these two factors allow us to get a bit more gas, get the stargate out at a similar timing to the robo, and uh, we should be all good. So we're going to come in, see what's up. And especially if it ends up being like a 12 pool or something, guys, we need to make especially sure that we uh, get those gases down quickly. Now, we don't see an expansion yet. We could block him, but we don't know if he's 12 pooling or not, so I don't want to block him too long. If he, if he puts it down, he puts it down. It's fine. So we still go Nexus on 20, and then Cybercore, same as always, guys. We see a gas, we see a pool. So this is just a pool hatchery build. All right, no worries, guys. Super standard opening. And then 20 
Oh, was I one probe? Oh, sorry guys, I actually built this on, on one probe less than I normally do. Whoops. So I, I didn't queue up one extra probe there. I did 19 supply Cybercore and Nexus. I wasn't looking at my supply, which is a little sloppy, but it is what it is. So I should have had one more probe queued up. So the Nexus and the Core should have been just a few seconds later. This won't really change much. We hung out to make sure he wasn't building lots of Zerglings, and now this probe just runs home. We could have run that home a few seconds earlier. And, uh, all right. Are under so what we want to do, guys, to set up for the Oracle pressure, what's Your really nice is, first of all, we want a Chrono 2 Adepts, but first of all, don't be building the Warp Gate, right? Now, he might actually be able to kill this. We're going to try and make another Adept as well. And we're going to try and go over here, just in case his Lings run off to the side and are trying to sneak their way in. Okay. Now we only start warp gate after the second adept starts, which I know seems kind of crazy. It's a very big delay on that. Combat but awaits. that does allow us to have a very good time. So we're just going to check for the third Glory base first of all. Daylong. And then the third Fire. adept will just rally to the star, to the uh, choke point, okay? Now you need to build your second gateway before 3 minutes 30, because that's when link speed kicks in, off hatch first. Now in this case, he actually went for an earlier one, so we probably need to do it even earlier. But because we're just focusing on the standard version of the build order... Oh my. Okay guys, so we just saw some, um, some guys coming. So we're going to try and wall off our base to buy time here, okay? Ooh, I thought they would have killed that already. Ooh, I really want to wall this off. Okay, so we've got an Oracle. Now we really want a Void Ray, because that's obviously the best unit here. Now you might be wondering, why are you not... Uh, oh, we're going to have to cancel that Cyber Core. So we cancelled it. Trying to just fight this. If we can wall off, that would be huge. I've got a Void Ray now, so as long as we just rally the probes up here, I think we're okay. And we're going to try and get more Adepts in the wall. And that's a really good all-in for him. Now, I didn't play safe at all against this because I was just trying to focus on the details of the build order. So I actually left my wall-in wide open, and if he was doing like a speedling attack or something, we would have been in trouble. So this is actually a really nice all-in, and it's kind of exposed some weaknesses in my play, to be fair. Um, so what do we want to do from here, guys? Well, let's try and get back on top of the build order, shall we? So... Void Ray's here. Oracle will go do some counter-attack, potentially. You must construct additional pylons. I don't know how that happened. Okay, Oracle going across the map. Keep probing. Um, okay, so we want to take the third base. We are supply blocked right now. We want to go double gas after the third, normally. The Void Ray can just go across the map as well. The Oracle is going to be on a patrol path. And then once you get your third down, you want to go Robo, Forge, Twilight. All at once. So we've got one of that there in the wall off. These guys can go up here. And what you can do is if they don't have like queens out there and stuff, you can actually just basically turn on your laser beams here and that'll kill that. These guys on gas. Remember this is all on two base. So what we did is we're attacking it and then we're shift A moving by the way. Okay. Okay, we can now rally there. So we can go forge, we can start getting like, all these other things. And normally you'd be going triple oracle. The reason I'm not in this case is because... Oh, hello. Whoops, that was a mistake. 
The reason I'm not going triple oracle, for those wondering, is because it felt like I would already had to go void ray, the early game was over. One oracle, one void ray would kind of act as the triple oracle that we're normally going for. And, and then we'd kind of figure it out from there. And I don't know if you guys watched the intro, but uh, essentially I was saying, I don't normally play this style. This is going to be a learning experience for me as well, right? So I don't have anywhere near as much intuitive or automatic understanding of how I should be playing. So keep that in mind as you watch me flounder and make little mistakes here and there and all this sort of stuff. Now, I don't think I needed to make all eight gateways straight away, guys. Um, I don't think that was really necessary. Let's try and get some scouting with this oracle. So we can come in and maybe just do a revelation there. That should see a lot of what's going on. We see a lair, a roach horn. And if you go around behind the base, oof, okay, we're going to wait to regen our shields a little bit. Shield battery there, just because why not? Um, and I wanted to build five sentries because we want to be a bit more force field focused with our push in this particular game, okay? Now we also want to go uh, Templar Archives, guys, and... Yeah, and we're going to stop at 60 probes this game. We're going to do it without these gases because I feel like it's just a bit too late to get them. I'm just going to come around the back and just see, hey, are there any tech structures here? You know, what are we looking at? It looks like Evo Roachhorn, probably. See if we can get out of this base, maybe. No. All right, we'll just hide this oracle in the back. Okay, we've got two oracle, uh, two immortals, so we're going to wait for a third one. Just warp in zealots for now. And we've got plus one. Oh, I guess we need a warp prism, don't we? So this should actually be a warp prism. So you want to go two to three immortals and then a warp prism, same as we did with our previous build. I'm a little slow on that, but you can see plus one's done. Templar archives is done. So it is past time that we uh, we got that going. We could also say, if we really want to commit hard, why not go 10 gateways makes sense as well, right? We're building a zealot archon once we get going. Is he doing mutas? Oh, there is actually a spy. I didn't see that. Oh my god, that's that's definitely an issue. So I'm going to build a pile on there as well. All right, time to go. Oh my god. Okay, well done. Now this is why you want to hit your attack on time, guys. So we're going to go for the big attack. And what are we doing? We're going to make stalkers and blink. Okay, where's my twilight? There it is. And... And then my army's going to commit to an attack. If you're completely unprepared for muters, you have to just go, guys. You don't have an option. It is the only choice that you have. Okay. So what are we doing? We're chronoing probes to try and recover from all this. We're building a cannon in each base. And we're going to keep my stalkers in a sort of central location so they can respond. Now, we're going to try and get some Archons up over here because they will absolutely destroy muters if we can get them up, and that is a big if. So, there we go, come on. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna build another warp prism so that we can keep going, okay? Oof! GG. So he hit with really well planned, timed out aggression, trying to take advantage of kind of the way we're playing the game as well. I didn't even notice that I spotted that Spire, guys, which is really bad until I looked back in the fog and was like, oh, I saw a finished Spire. Oh, shit. Um, which would have put more urgency on the build order for sure. So let's go back to the start. And number one, let's talk about the build order in isolation just to really hit this home and get those notes added to the document or double check that I added them all because there's always little things that I forget to actually write in there. Double chrono, adapt for... Okay, so so early on, um, pull one worker off minerals onto gas. So just 15 out of 16 on minerals until first gas is full, right? So that's a really nice one. Normal one gate expand. Only start warp gate after stargate and two adepts have started. Starts around time second adept starts okay so we're delaying warp gate so those are the two early game adjustments we want to go i've written two oracles not three to make it a little bit less hectic okay so two oracle we're going not three that makes sense 
Second gate to complete wall off, let's say, I don't know, 3 minute 15 or something like that. Basically, sometime before 3.30. So, uh, 4 minute third base, we're then going to go 4 gases, Twilight, Robo Forge, Observer, get charge and plus 1, add some Immortals on a Warp Prism. Now, I think 3 Immortals into a Warp Prism is totally fine. If we Chrono Boost it a few times, we don't get Supply Blocked. However, if you make some mistakes, usually two is better, so you don't delay your attack too long, right? So two Immortals is okay, but if we do this perfectly, I think three Immortals should be the goal. Whether we hit it or not is nothing. Five Sentries, Force Fields is what they're mostly for, but maybe we can do a Hallucinate as well. We don't really need to because we've got two Oracles unless we use lose our Oracles. Six more Gates. We want to hit with Zealot, Archon, Immortal, Sentry. We want to try to force field their army so they can't kite us. We didn't really get to do that in this game. Of course, it was chaotic. So now let's look at this game because there's a bunch of things we needed to react to right from the start. First things first, we saw that this was a gas pool hatchery build, which means he could start link speed a lot earlier than normal. To put this in context, just so you guys understand, right? Let's, let's really understand this from the Zerg point of view. If they go hatchery, then gas, then pool, Hatchery goes down at 48 seconds. Then they go for the gas at about a minute and eight seconds as standard. Pool at about a minute 14. In this case, this gas goes down 48 seconds, 47 seconds. So that is about 20 seconds faster. Now, if we can think, link speed normally finishes three minutes 30 with a hatch gas pool. If the gas is 20 seconds faster, therefore link speed can be 20 seconds faster. Link speed could be kicking in about three minutes and 10 seconds, okay? So, just in general in this game, from that point, right? So number one, we lose our probe. Well done by him, done that down. Now I always send my first adept across the map. However, don't I have a little change up with my old build, my other build, right? Against this sort of play, I would often go Cybercore before Nexus to make sure these adepts get out quicker and I can scout what's going on earlier. I didn't do that this game. And I don't think I would ever want to do it with a Stargate build because it's so important for me to get just the standard Nexus core or second gas on time. Whereas if I go core before Nexus, I need to get the second pylon earlier, which delays the second gas by about five or 10 seconds. Any gas delays are really bad with a Stargate build in my opinion. So I don't actually know if I would do that. The question is though, does that put more onus on the scout? You guys are learning with me. What could I say? I told you guys this one would be a learning experience. I, ch I checked and there was only one lava saved up when the pool finished. He could have gone four zerglings, but we only saw one. We only saw one of these turn into an egg. So just by looking at my probe and I seeing that, I don't really need to be worried too hard. As long as I chrono boost the second adept, I should be okay here, okay? All right, so that's number one. Um, if if we see six lava, three three lava, six zerglings possible when the pool finishes, right? You, this is why you look at this. If I see three lava there, that's where I'm like, oh shit. I actually am kind of worried. And in that scenario, I think one of the best things you can do is actually build the Stargate in the wall. And then you can just leave the probe in the wall. And even though the Stargate is obviously a bit more exposed there, which is dangerous, I think it's okay. Simply because Stargate's a very tanky structure, and this way you're safe against a wall off. But you do not want to build a second gateway here, because if you're building a second gateway, that slows down your Stargate and slows down the rest of your build. Being safe against one thing, the potential for six or eight Zerglings to run past this first Adept, right? So if we go to like, this point, right? So the potential for our adept to shade out and then six Zerglings to run in. If we play safe by building a second gateway and putting a probe there, we're delaying our Stargate and weakening ourselves against something like the Roach push that was coming. So this is really, really important. Very, very important is overreacting to things is always bad in StarCraft, right? We want to try and find a little bit of a razor's edge here. And that's why you can look at this and say, oh, I'm playing pretty greedy. And I am. I am playing pretty greedy because I knew it was gas pool and I don't actually get my wall off up very quickly, right? I send both adepts across the map, nothing at home, no gateway up. I think if we just speed up our second gateway and that goes down at three minutes, we should be okay. Yeah. I think we should be okay. Technically, there could be a speedling all-in coming, 
but it's very hard for them to hide it. And I think when I encounter that on the ladder, I would analyze it and figure it out based on looking at that. And I'd go, okay, the Zerglings are arriving at X timing. Maybe my second adept, if my first one went straight through the map, my second adept searches to the right while shading to the left. So it's scouting both potential paths where Zerglings might be hiding, right? And that kind of cancels and it delays the adept getting to the other side of the map, but it cancels out 80% of those Zergling all-ins. I would spot on the way across the map with the second adept by running the adept to the right, shading to the left, because I'm going to spot those Zerglings coming and I'm going to go, oh crap, recall adepts, wall off, get batteries, get void rays and all this sort of stuff. So you can see we're kind of thinking of it as we go. We're figuring out, but we don't want to be like, oh, I'll just wall off and build a battery because we don't know. He could just be droning. He could just make link speed, pull off gas, have no roach horn, be taking a third base, all this sort of stuff, right? But this is why the adept going across the map is so important. You can see here, I go across, I see roaches coming. My adepts immediately shade home. I pull probes to fight the Zerglings and I actually thought I'd kill them. I didn't realize he wasted so much of my mining time. And I continued with the Oracle because I'd already started it, but obviously a Void Ray is the easier unit to use. So if you guys would rather, um, like when I spotted those Roaches, I think the Oracle had just started. So I very easily could have canceled the Oracle and made a Void Ray. And I think that's the one size fits all better choice, right? A Void Ray is still legit after the patch as a defensive reaction. Well, why would they not be? They take a few seconds more to build. They cost 50 more minerals. If you're building it versus a Roachling all in, nothing that hits up. Obviously, a Void Ray is still the best answer here. 100%. Costs a bit more, but it's totally fine. Obviously, this Cyber Core is good, guys, just because it buys me time. But notice I don't panic turn on my Oracle. Oracle's best for killing Lings. It's not great for killing Roaches or Ravages. But more importantly, every second I let it gather energy, the more oomph it's going to do, the more damage it's going to do. You cancel that to get some money back. Now, I didn't have energy for battery overcharge, otherwise I would have used that here. Not that it would have helped me that much. But if I did get battery overcharge, and say I had the battery back here, actually, if I had the battery further back where it's hard for them to hit, I could have pulled all these probes and kind of fought down here. And it would have been really hard for him to get in range of the buy to buy all the battery. And the probes and the adepts would have been awesome with the battery overcharge healing them all. I could have held him right here with just probes and the adepts, basically. Yeah. Very well played. Very well played by Bullia to, to do this attack. Definitely created a scary moment. But you see, probes actually don't fight too bad if they can get those surrounds on the Zerglings. And especially if you get an Adept in the Mineral Line, if that Adept was here quicker, you put it in the gap, what I could have done is a few seconds earlier. So early in that fight, check this out. Notice how, let's select these probes and you can watch in the bottom wireframe. Notice how, check it out. They're gonna start taking a lot of damage in a moment. The moment none of them have died, at this moment, I should select them and click them on the minerals. And then I might not lose a single probe because if they're A moved, the Lings will all go after the Adept the moment we stop attacking. And then we could maybe attack again and get an attack off quickly and finish them as well. But instead, I just A moved and I lose one, two, three, four, five probes, right? So if we had an Adept up there earlier, that would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm GM with random, that's right. I mean, I, I play all races individually a bit more than I play random. I play I play random sometimes. But. Chad Rays is still obviously super powerful units, guys. Now I did let him in with another run by, which really slowed down my follow up. And I was also slow to build pylons here. I should have expected this pylon to go down. So I should have actually already been building extra pylons in my main base to power my Stargate in case this pylon went down as well. So that's a big mistake that I made in the heat of the battle, in the heat of this pressure. I was like, duh! Really important that the moment I started that Void Ray, the next thing I did was build a pylon here. And I didn't do that, so that was definitely a big mistake for me, guys. So we start that Void Ray, I'm like, yeah, Void Ray, Void Ray, Void Ray. And we chrono it. Cancel this. Definitely should have built two pylons up here. If I built a battery in my main, that's also a really good idea. So that's actually something I forgot to do as well. If you think about it, there's so many times I think I've barely breached and I'm going to do enough damage in ZVP. But if they have a shield battery plus their probes fighting, they can kill so many Zerglings. So I should have built a shield battery maybe up here or somewhere in the mineral line or something like that. That would have been a really good idea. So that's definitely a big mistake. So from this point, I was supply blocked for a really long time. Obviously I'm ahead at the end of it. I'm up like eight workers, which is awesome in this matchup, but I let another Zergling run by in, which is kind of bad. And he does take a third and macros pretty well from there. We let him run right past because I'm a pleb. 
at least two or three probes, a bunch of mining time. We clean it up. S see how late this pylon is? It's so late, dude. So I was on 46 supply for like a good minute. <laughs> so bad. But then we go Robo Forge Twilight. I decided, look, I'm not going to keep building oracles at this point. I'm just going to go straight to the next step. One oracle, one void ray will probably be very annoying. And that's all I need to do. And what I should have done here, guys, is shift clicked away. If I wasn't going to watch these units, I shift clicked them to A move because I wanted them to cancel the hatchery and I wanted to kill the drone. Super greedy and unnecessarily greedy. Even though I got the drone kill, it lost me the void ray and it almost lost me the oracle because I was looking at home. Now, I started building gateways, but what you gotta remember guys is it's more important for you to chrono Immortals, Observer, and then Immortals out, and then your Warp Prism than it is to get your gateways going. And when we go up in gateways, we do wanna to go to 10 gateways as well. So let's go six more gates. Let's go eight more gates, okay? That's gonna be real nice. All right, and then we probe up our third. And remember, you can get minerals and gas or just the minerals. I prefer to just go the minerals usually because you've already worked up a bit of a gas bank. And the idea normally would be if I still had the Void Ray alive, it would keep harassing here. I might try to, try to throw some stasis traps Mommy. down. But because I'd already killed the third, that wasn't the case. Now, if we had two oracles out, we'd also use two oracles. We'd be doing stasis trap here, coming from the top stasis trap here, using that really annoying harassment that's so powerful. Proxy BC, thank you for the 43 month resub, mate. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, and then he manages to, to get up to Spire, and I actually see it, but I didn't even realize it for a long time that there was a Spire down. Now, you might be like, cool, so you'd build Phoenix, right? No. If I knew there was a Spire earlier, I would have just been even more focused on getting that Prism out, which, like I said, I should have already had the Prism out, and I should already be pushing across the map. I was very late on this attack. Why? Because this attack has already got so many powerful pieces. I've got lots of force fields. I've got two immortals. I've got charge arts. Why am I taking so long to push across the map? Because the sport prism and robo production was a little delayed. So we've got to remember that prism enables us to push such huge, huge thing. And, the and if we got that out, we'd be hitting him right now. And I'd go, that's fine. You can kill some probes with your muters. You can kill every probe on this base. I'll build, I'll build some cannons here here and i'm gonna kill everything you've got at home right because i'm hitting you right now so as it was i had to do this as a kind of okay a move the army into his third base jeez try to warp in some stalkers and get some defense going warping them in at this base didn't really make any sense i should have just ran the probes to my natural and warped in the stalkers on the natural because then i would be between the mutalisks and hitting my main and my natural that would have been a better way of doing it with my stalkers as it was though, we just already obviously were ahead on the macro, so he couldn't stop the counter attack on the other side of the map. GG's. How come you don't see one get expands in PvP? You do at pro level, it's just, it's very sensitive to defend. Same reason why you don't see one Rex expands in TVT. Mirror matchups in general have some very, very sharp, aggressive timings. <clears throat> Whereas like in PvT, you can kind of defend a big attack with a few stalkers early on because stalkers just beat the crap out of reapers marines hellions when it, as long as they're microed right but pvp you don't have that asymmetry where you're like oh this this unit's going to carry a lot of weight you know um if you're playing pvz adepts microed against slow zerglings annihilate them right one early stargate unit annihilates roaches but against a Protoss player, well, they can also make the same Adepts or the same Void Rays. So it's, it's, you just don't have the advantages of your race in a mirror matchup, right? So the whole, oh, I can just build units suddenly to defend as a Zerg player, that doesn't cut it in ZVZ, does it? Right? I'll just build some Zerglings. No, number one, he's got Banelings, which counters Zerglings. Number two, he's also Zerg, but he's been planning his attacks. So he's flooding across with an insane number of units. So this is why, like... Yeah, those, those mirror matchups are naturally a matchup where you, you don't get any asymmetrical advantage. You're like, oh, my one stalker will kill three of your stalkers. It's like, well, yeah, there is shield batteries and stuff like that. Is he going three hatch before pool, guys? What a chant. Oh, we're a little slow on that. It's <laughs> all right. Guys, this guy's going three hatch before pool. What a legend. Now remember, how do we do that? Well, obviously, 3H before pool is super greedy. 
So you want to completely change your build order, order, bend over backwards to make sure you punish them. Because if you don't do that, just kidding guys, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Don't change your build at all! We're already doing a too adept into oracle pressure, why would we change anything here? It makes no sense. We've seen the third hatchery. Um, we don't need to change anything. This is already a fantastic build uh, at, at taking advantage of this. So, because we're already doing a double adept pressure, he's not going to have link speed for ages. Look, his gas hasn't even started. I mean, this guy is dead in the water, guys. Now, don't get me wrong, I could still mess it up, get my adepts surrounded by slow zerglings, throw them away, run my oracle into queens, and mess everything up. And I'm actually really good at that. It's one of my talents. A lot of people... What are your talents, pig? What's your specialty as a, a player? My specialty is being friggin' taking situations where I should win and then putting extra mental pressure on myself so every mistake I make has like a compounding effect. And I go, oh, why am I so bad? Ah. And I start panicking with every mistake and stuff and like freaking out. Oh, I should have opened up that path there with the... On this map, you can open up these paths to get your adepts across faster, guys. Um, I hope you guys like my explanation. Najakar Mina. Combat awaits. The firstborn shall persevere. So you can see, he's actually building Faith. a lot of Zerglings. Which means he's already taken the damage. Where shall we march? Combat awaits. There we go, we get another adapt, the second gateway. And already we've done the damage. So if you feel stressed to do damage, that makes no sense. We saw him build 15 Zerglings, and we've already seen a bunch of them die. So why would we feel pressure to do damage right now, guys? Riddle me that. We already know, he's playing super inefficiently. Look at that, we're going to cancel that at the last second. And now we're going to lose these adepts, but that's okay. Okay. First oracle comes in, doesn't really find anything. Okay. Research complete. Okay, we just grab these guys that popped out because he didn't run those yet. Okay. Now, I'm going to make a Phoenix, guys, because that's way cheaper than a Void Ray, these guys. These. Okay. Okay. You can go there. Get the double gas after the third base. I'm trying to remember the build order, guys. I don't really remember it. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Teleport successful. <laughs> we're gonna tell the phoenix to go around and then we go robo twilight forge Glorious combat is upon us. You must construct okay and we're gonna do some stasis strap pressure i think let's see is there a spore crawler shit give us your So we're going to transfer from the natural, rally down there, all good. Just going to build four gateways to start. And let's do some stasis strap pressure, shall we? Ah, oh, not that one, not that one. So the stasis strap hasn't really done anything yet, but that's because he pulled away, I guess. All right. Very important, guys. We've got to go Observers, Immortals, and we can't miss a beat on that. Plus one, charge. Uh, and we've basically got enough probes, I think. <clears throat> All right, so this guy's going to come in here and see if he can, um, I don't know. Oh, so we do lose him. Not the greatest. Okay. All right, we need this Immortal production for sure. Uh, we want to get the Templar Archives, and of course, four more gateways. One, two, three, four. And then we can go like that. So I, I built my, um, my extra thing there a little bit early. So we can go two Immortals into a War Prism. I think the Immortals are, are late once again, guys. And we do need to get those five sentries that I was talking about, okay? Oh, he's like really well set up. Mass Queen, well played. Alright, what we're going to do is the... Uh... Alright. 
Oh, we moved that forward nicely done. Okay. Do we have a queen there? Yes, we do. Okay. Alright, making zealots, sentries. Um, we've got one immortal there. And lots more pylons. And we need to just keep chronoing that robo. Let's go for one more stasis trap here, shall we? I return to serve. And, alright. So we can get tons of zealots here. Oh, he's here. Where's that phoenix? There it is. All right. Do you guys know I like to put flying units out front on patrol paths to see what's up? We're gonna make one more immortal. Archons. And we're just gonna... We were about to go for a big attack, but he came to me, which is really good for me. Let's move the Archon forward to break the force fields. And now my Warp Prism can go forward as well. We're going to siege that there. Let's make sure that's not in range of the Warp Prism. Uh, the Spore Crawler, that is. And we can just aim move across the map now. He's got a big mass of roaches there. Wow. So, let's... Thanks for the Bezos box. Let's try to do this again. We've got an Immortal coming out as well. Oh, no. Oh, that's huge. Look at that, we trapped a lot of his roaches there, guys. Oh, now we can just overwhelm for sure. Yeah. Now, obviously, you want to try and grab these units at the back and try to make sure they get in there, get on top, get on top, get on top, so that they actually keep killing stuff, but I think this is more than enough. And very well played by the opponent. So remember, guys, we're, we're playing no splash damage still, other than the Archons, just plus one attack, but... The Stargate gives us really good ability to pressure Scout and keep some momentum going. Um, that game got a little hectic uh, because I was focusing on the Adepts probably a bit more than I would like you guys to. Um, but you could see just the immense amount of defense that we got forced out of him. So he went three hatch, a very greedy build. If we go to five minutes, I'm up eight workers. I forced seven queens. And if we look at the units lost tab, I've killed 15 units. A bunch of those are drones. I've lost one Adept, right? So not only did I kill, I traded almost, what, 4 to 1? A bit better than 4 to 1. I also um, forced a crazy amount of defense. My opponent still hasn't taken gases at the 5 minute mark. So he's dead in the water. He can't make a lair, he can't make roaches, link speed, anything like that. Uh, even though I felt kind of delayed on my stuff. So this was a slow link counter pressure, wasn't it? That's hilarious. Um, even, and I was kind of slow on the robo and stuff. And I, so I, I think in hindsight, guys, the robo needs to take priority, right? Because that's slowing us down is that robo being late. So what we're going to do is third, I'm going to put the robo down and the twilight can go a bit earlier, okay? And go observer. I think this, this shows us the correct priority a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a bit neater in the build order now. Archons, any massive unit breaks force fields, that's alright. So what was interesting, guys, is, is I couldn't do a lot with oracles this game because my opponent built spores and had uh, 14 queens, right? Seven queens so early. So my oracles, normally I do a lot more with the oracles, but because this player was keeping their queen split and had so many plus spores everywhere, it was really hard to actually find damage. So in this scenario, if they're really hugging the mineral lines with their queens, something you can do, guys, is you can come through and you try to catch them here between the bases or here. So you try to like bring your oracle in and catch them between. Now he had creep tumors, didn't have good overlord spread, but they had creep tumors and a few other things. So it was pretty hard to actually do that secretly. But if you just kind of skim in here, every now and then you'll see the drones pop. And especially if you've already done a revelation, you might even spot them popping and then, you know, come in here. Oh, cool, kill two or three drones, fly away. Blizzard should put something in it. If players leave in less than two to three minutes, they can't insta join ladder again. You'd, yeah, you'd, you'd think that would be a really easy thing to put in. Unfortunately, Blizzard. Uh, trying to get Blizzard to do things is even in even when they were pretty good about Starcraft and everything. It's PVT, by the way. They were actually. Um, it was. I, I imagine it as, as trying to sa saddle a T Rex. It's so not only were they a dinosaur because they're old and slow. But it was literally like, it's like trying to saddle a T-Rex and get it to follow your orders. You could be like, hey T-Rex, there's dinner there. And it's like, 
no, I'm gonna go in the opposite direction, I'm a T-Rex! And you're like, oh, why did I choose a T-Rex as my mount? This is so fucking stupid. That's essentially trying to get Blizzard to do logical things. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not easy, it's not easy. I've loved so many individuals at Blizzard over the years, and there's been certain movements they've done to get lots of awesome things done for StarCraft. But there's been like basic things like server preference that they just like never made the logical decision on even when I told people about it. I, I blame Rotterdam for that as well actually. I do have an axe to grind with Roddy. Where he's like, no, nah, this is a good ping system. Matching system, I'm like, not going for the most competitive match is the best system. I was like, I've lost all respect for you, Roddy. I honestly think Roddy misunderstood what they were saying. Though. I don't know. I can't even remember our exact disagreement, but I remember he was wrong. A hundred percent wrong! Anyways, thanks for hanging, guys. Uh, we're doing a PVT here. <laughs> he had some really obscure example of why their system can be good in, like, one scenario. And I was like, yeah, but... Ooh, he could have blocked my Nexus. So that was a good thing that we didn't let that happen, guys. Now, why are we queuing this around? So that he doesn't take too much damage, but... Oh, he blocked me! He blocked me with a reactor, guys. You bastard. All right, now we got the Cybercore down. Resume probes. And this guy can come back up here. Oh, I lost him. Oh, no, I thought he'd still be alive. Oh, well. It is what it is, and we'll get probe file in there. Oh, we're missing guy on minerals, apparently. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Anyway, guys, so we know he went reactor first, um, which means he's going to be going straight marines. So we don't need to worry about too much. Just going to play a completely normal build. He's going to be building lots of marines. We didn't actually see a command center, but he's only on one gas. So the only all in he could do there is, like, massing marines from it and stuff, and actually he's hidden two barracks here. My adept should find out in time. If he's doing something crazy like that, and we'll get it. Now remember guys, in Masters 3, we are doing the same build order as we were doing previously. The only difference is gonna be that we're gonna be much more focused on actually transitioning into gas and our robo. We're gonna try and go triple robo, which is sounds crazy, but it allows you to make a very powerful gas transition all at once. Um, and it's, it's really quite smooth, so definitely like it. Let's try and shade again. And you gotta be real careful because obviously he could have four marines out, guys. Oh, he's going three racks. Okay. State thy bidding. Glorious combat is upon us. Did he just build four Reapers? To glory. Oof. All right, so uh, Blink never made. Let's get that going. Let's also cancel that Stalker. Second and third gateway and a Forge while probing. So he went Reactor into two Reapers. Now, our Stalker at home wasn't hotkeyed, which is disorganized lack of preparation. I was talking about silly things instead of focusing on my gameplay. And that's why we ended up in a bit of a hard position there against that. Now we know it's a three racks, guys, but we did big damage to lay his expansion and all the rest. So we're still feeling really good about our position right now. We're gonna build another pylon out here. And um, yeah, we're gonna go for that third base as we do. So second and third gateway, forge, get the third. I'd like to build a pylon on that as well. And awesome. So we're going to leave one stalker at home, guys. Is this guy trolling? Is he making mass reaper? Did he just scan so he could run his reapers away on time? This guy's not trying to win this game. Um, <laughs> is he going to jump in my main at the same time or something? What is this? It's the dumbest thing I've seen all day, guys. Oh my god. This is hilarious. He's throwing grenades, like, frantically. Trying to survive here. 
All right, we've got nine stalkers out front. We've got the third base up. Getting ready for the fourth is not really important right now. Let's get that and let's get charge. Okay, I think his reapers should be stuck at home. Let's go five gateways here. Yeah, he's still making mass reaper, guys. This is objectively appalling. This is so bad. Um, stalkers are just amazing versus reapers. And we're just following our build as usual. Let's get plus one armor. Queued up ahead of time. We're up on eight gateways. And we can now grab a guy go to take a fourth. And he could run across the map, but we've got recall available. And I should have known from the third gas that something was up. I just assumed it was the second gas. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay, he's still massing Reapers. I thought he'd transition, but he won't. Okay, okay, defend the high ground. There's no way, mate. Where'd you go? Okay. Oh, he just hit up in the top. I think. This is so dumb. <laughs> this is so silly, man. Oh my god, this is it's kind of fun to be fair. It's not good at all in the slightest, but it's hilarious, that's for sure. Alright guys, we're gonna build some probes. Um he does I mean I I didn't need to attack him at all, so definitely we did get a little over eager with that. Let's wait for plus one armor, shall we? take that fifth base and now that plus one armor is done we can do it doesn't have a third right no he doesn't he's dead oh he's trying to take one you can't run that's a stalker force field that's what that is So, he was trying to go stim. What the hell was that? That's crazy. Okay, so the way this works is just the speed of the units. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Zerglings. Um, hey, mate. GG, well played. Clever all in. <laughs> oh, um, GM. Doing a bronze GM. TV. Um, if someone messages me, I'll give them the link, but otherwise no. So what I didn't, I, for the life of me, ever expect was more Reapers, and that's the way this can work, is basically you're always expecting to be more mobile and able to disengage, but Blink is not as mobile as Reapers. Reapers are just insanely fast. So they can kind of run you down. So I was like, cool. I kept wanting to counter-pressure him as he was transitioning into Marines. And he never transitioned into Marines. So that's that, that's why that counter push actually got me in trouble, right? Because I was like, well, I want to go I want to go fight with you. But actually, I was the one who was being way greedier. And this kind of, you know, the lack of scouting with my build order, right? I should have just said, hey, 
on a basic level, he has a very fast army composition, right? A very fast army composition. So, what should I do? If he's only on two base, and I'm going on three, heading towards a fourth, I should be very careful about attacking. This is kind of like attacking into speed zerglings. So, he, he actually played really well, right? They, they played really well in terms of microing the Reapers and actually keeping production up and spending the money on the triple reactor. It's not a solid style, of course, by any means. And I think they could have split the Reapers up to do more backstabs. Like at this point, I think if they had four Reapers jumping in the main and diving, and then two Reapers jumping in here, like that would actually be a really cool way of potentially doing it as well. Of course, you split your Reapers up, you start bleeding them off in small numbers, that can be bad. But definitely that's something that can do quite well. But he kind of did it like, hey, I'm just going to mass up my Reapers and then your Stalkers are going to overcommit and I'm going to run them down. And, and I was like, oh shit, I was actually so outnumbered. I wasn't expecting that, right? Thanks, mate. The best costume for Final Bronze to GM. What is it, Maxan? I mean, I still killed some SCVs here, right? So it's not like this was the worst thing of all time. My god. The link to Endor links, Maxan. The link to Endor links. I mean, I do kill a lot of SCVs, and I pick off some Reapers as well on the retreat. You can see just how fast those Reapers are. And he does hunt down quite a few Stalkers, and I'm like, quickly, like, get back, get back, get back. And I realize I don't have any shield batteries in any bases either, so letting him in that mineral line was very dangerous, but you can see that it does turn south pretty quickly. Yeah. So... And then we were able to hunt him down. I didn't need to hunt him down, though. I know some people are like, oh, this would probably work if you were slower. I could have just chilled out a little bit more, for sure, guys. I definitely could have just split my units, like, half here, half down here, and keep just trying to put units out on the watchtowers and that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah. Basically, I was, like, constantly trying to hunt them down because I, I felt like with Blink, he had no business still being on the map. And, yeah, he doubled straight around. I was like, where the frig did he go? Because I was like, I thought he was hiding in the corner. Then you see what we did here, right? So we quickly tried to warp in the high ground. We only had enough for one stalker, unfortunately. I should have warped in some zealots there. I was out of gas. That was that was the factor. But we recalled, and then I A-moved my whole army here. And then all I did was micro these units in the main. So as soon as he goes back to the natural, so you can see that A-move down here on the low ground now. Yeah, I, I only just gave the A-move. So the A-move was a little slow on that low ground. Should have done it earlier. And he does actually get some of these Reapers out, but not many of them. So yeah, only like three Reapers get out. And he's trying to make the bio transition now. And in, in, in a moment he will with like stim and stuff. But uh, it's, uh, just hasn't quite found the damage yet. Mass Reaper. Very silly, but you can see how also the grenades stop the units from attacking. So if someone gets caught by those grenades a lot, that can actually be... It can, it can snowball. So this is a great surprise tactic because it jumps on you and kills you so fast. And it kind of, there's no waiting for upgrades. It's kind of like a fluid growth in power as the Reapers grow in numbers, as opposed to bio where it's like, you're kind of weak, you're kind of weak. Stim shields, medivax, you're kind of strong. You know, it takes a while to um, to, to, to get to that. But that was, that was cool. I was like, man, I'm gonna do a gas transition. I did not get to a gas transition at all. Whew. Shouldn't the PVT style be done with two forges? I don't see a point we make a second forge in the dock. Nope, we do one forge all game. Um, you definitely could add a second forge or even go double forge very early, but I didn't want to delay my third too long. Um, you don't really have money for 1-1 one -one upgrades, and this way you can keep it on just two gas geysers the whole game, and you just keep chronoing one forge from really, really early on. Yeah, if you spam the grenades consistently, the enemy units are just stuck bouncing around. They're not really attacking. Specials come in the chat, guys. He's got uh, some bronze to GM advice for everybody. He says, uh, just build void rays. Special, Mr. Anabolic French Toast. Oh, crap, guys. We got a 5k Zerg player. It's going to be really hard. All right. Wow. All right. We're getting up in the ranks, guys. Wow. Masters 3. We're already playing against some beasts. Um, it's going to be a real obstacle. So, guys, remember, on these maps where it's far away, you can pull a probe just to go down to the natural just a few seconds earlier. Australia. Good luck, good luck. I think we're getting 12 pulled, everybody. Cool. 
Can you do the- should I just ask him like really dumb questions? Can you do Gangnam Style? Can you, can you do that? Do you do Gangnam Style Dance? This guy's 100% proxy hatching me or 12 pulling guys. Wait, why are that probes not stacking up now? Oh, he's got a hatchery on time. Okay. This is not what I expected. Ah, we don't need to do that fancy grass. That's super unnecessary. Nexus on 20. Uh, I did not even press the button for that to go down. It just placed itself, thankfully, in the right spot. Jesus, that repeat delay, dude. I think it's because it's the same. It's one of these uh, core optimizations that I forgot about, even. <laughs> okay, you go there. Alright, guys. Uh, okay, so we're doing the Oracle build. Remember, double Oracle, not triple Oracle is the rule, okay? And we just build one Phoenix to clean up the um, overlords. <coughs> okay. Third base. Okay. Third base, fourth base, and fifth base if we get there. Stargate goes down, pretty good timing. He will see it. We can do one chrono on the probes. Oracle can rally over there. The first Combat shall be Is he two basing me? To glorire shall be. Oh no, he's got a third. Okay. So we're gonna chrono an oracle when we get a chance to, guys, and we'll build that second gateway. Alright, I don't see any Zerglings, guys. It's a lot of Zerglings being built, though. Yes. Make sure we keep building adapts. Make another oracle. You must construct additional pylons. Glorious combat is upon us. You must construct additional pylons. Your probe okay. pylon is under attack. You must construct additional pylons. Try and do some damage here. An omen. Okay, and we should be able to use defend with that. Now it looks like my other oracle did die, which is obviously unfortunate. Let's keep doing the build, okay? Robo. So what are we going to do, guys? We're going to build one more oracle just so we can keep doing the pressure, okay? And then we're going to send these adepts out so that we can pressure the, um, with a bit more, okay? So one adept at home, nothing at the third right now. I know that seems kind of crazy. I remember we're separating the twilight and the forge from the other thing on the, um... On that. And then these guys are going to shade in there, okay? That oracle can go there. And these guys are all diving teams. An 
Aerodine, wash a go. We let us begin. How can I do? And extrapolating strength in the sky. And we're just using hold position there, okay, guys? Now, like you guys know, you know I don't play this style much, so I am just kind of intuitively doing things. We're gonna F2 this to try and defend. Oh, I'm supply blocked. That's why I can't warp in. I'm like, why can't I warp in, man? Well played. Really good build from him. Um, very sloppy execution for me. Now, obviously we did some good damage to his economy, but we didn't see his push coming. And so... There's nothing we can really do unless we can build. Even though we kept all of our guys alive. Did I lose my cyber core? Apparently. You must place that. What did he break the rocks with? Aha. Archon's very, very good versus uh, Zerglings, so maybe we can clear them. I'm gonna try and take a fourth base over here and just see what happens, guys. I don't really know. This has a thousand times more things than me from the early damage. If I won this game, it would have been pretty epic, but I guess we needed to go Disruptors. <laughs> 
Disruptors are always the comeback unit, guys. Remember, whenever you're behind, always go Disruptors, okay? It's the rule. Actually, the rule. <laughs> he just has a thousand times more things than me, right? <laughs> if you could get to the safety of the queens, he's always going to be fine. This is hilarious. Alright, so we almost tried to show you guys how to do an impossible comeback, but didn't quite get there. In the end... There's so much stuff! Oh my god! Oh, this is cool. GG, well played. <laughs> Artist is definitely a name I recognize, so I don't know if he's streaming or not, but it definitely felt like some pretty good play. Um, he did a random Ling Bane timing, kind of almost dark-esque while taking a fourth base, which is not a bad way to play. Um, let's look at the opening. So first things first, um, there was some mistakes early on, right? What did we do? I'm trying to remember what went on early game. So we, we, our Stargate could have gone down a few seconds earlier. Not a biggest deal. Go Adepts, then we go Warp Gate. The Chrono Probes. I don't know if you need to Chrono Probes here. You could just Chrono Oracle since you're Chronoing Adepts. I think one Chrono on Probes is probably a good idea. Otherwise your economy is kind of weak. And I'm missing probe production a little bit here. I missed like a few seconds of one probe. I do get an oracle started and we chrono it shortly, right? Please tell me I chrono that. Chrono, 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 please, please, please. Build a third adept. I got massive damage done with the first two adepts, which is huge, 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 huge damage, right? Um, so we're up like nine probes. But if you lose your adepts like that, your oracle should stay at home to defend your third. Ah, that's it. That's it. That's the rule. That's the rule. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then and then once you get a few more adepts out, then you can move your oracles across. That's the rule. I forgot. Okay. I mean, I say I forgot. I barely ever knew because I, I don't play a lot of Stargate play, like I said. So this is actually really useful. Awesome. Okay. Uh, if your two adepts die, leave first oracle over third to secure it until you have an adept or two, um, an adept in the choke point. Beautiful, really basic, really, really basic. These diamond zergs got moved, says the Nate. He was GM, he's a 5k player, 5k something. Is this build, what is this build? You mean the one that's on screen right now? What's the question, mate? It's in front of you. <laughs> no worries. I mean, it's on screen as well. That's cool. Maybe you asked us before I brought this up. Um, this is just a two Oracle into three base charge Immortal Arc on timing attack. I think that would have been huge because we've really got to look at this part of the build order and say, okay, it's really important that I start the third. But even at this point, I felt really uneasy because I was like, dude, I have nothing to defend this third from speedlings right now. So this was a really weird moment for me in the game because I was freaking out like, should I even be dropping this? And yes, I should still be dropping it, but that Oracle should be sitting overhead, turning on its laser right now to kill these Zerglings. Even killing the probe would have cost them three Zerglings, something like that. Um, I didn't build a pylon here. So we've also got to remember that pylon builds with the Oracle. So you guys can see how unfamiliar with this build I am. Uh, okay, we can just add this here. Two times Oracle. So I guess we go Oracle plus Pylon, second Oracle, Phoenix to clear OVs at some point. Cool. You depowered Gates, hunted his few stalkers, denied him to power the Robo. Ha, <laughs> nice. Isn't it a rule to start a Pylon after a Stargate unit for your first couple of units? Yeah, same with Robo or Stargate, you always start a Pylon after building the first unit. But I was, uh, the thing is with this build, it's very easy for me to forget because I'm microing two Adepts in their base as I'm starting my Oracle. 
right? So it's kind of like, it's about the same time where I'm very focused on, on those. So it's easy for me to forget that. I got to remember to start the pylon and then send the adepts in. Same with a robo. I mean, if you're building an observer, it's not as important with the robo, but you're still going to end up building either a prism or an immortal right after, both which uses up a lot of supply. So generally speaking, yeah. Yeah, a general rule is whenever you make a robo or a stargate, you're you're going to be starting to build tech units, which is chewing up <coughs> chewing up extra supply. Whereas with Twilight, you're only making an upgrade, so you can delay it a bit more. <coughs> yeah. I bet writing stuff down really helps. Absolutely. Every every game I play, I, if I if I actually want to improve at it and I'm enjoying improving and refining build orders and strategies and figuring things out, I always write things down. I've, I've written builds down in pretty much any strategy game, you name it. And it, it's not something I sit there and go back and refer to it. There's a lot of people who are incredibly methodical, memorization focused nerds. For me, it's just a way of organizing my thinking. If I write it down, I'm forcing it to be organized and to make sure I consciously know what I'm doing rather than just randomly and chaotically doing things. So third and fourth gas plus robo go down same time, guys. That's one action. So I could have gone gas, gas, and robo here. Would have actually been a good way to do it, I think. Because <clears throat> then the robo units rally out a little bit quicker. Yeah, so this would have been much smoother if I got the pylon early, got the, the, the nexus down easier without having to build so many adepts gases um <clears throat> and it just so turns out that my opponent who's going for a dark style 46 drone no no they're going for like what 55 drones they are going pretty bad drone but they're already planning to do this just yolo ling bane 50 drone thing i come in and kill quite a lot of workers right i kill these adepts i didn't micro them as well as i should have those adepts should have just waited until i was ready to send them in because i ended up luring the zerglings to these adepts so even though i'm wasting mining time it's not that much damage and I did lose my previous Oracle as well, which was a little sloppy. But I, I rebuilt it because I figured, hey, let's make sure I have two. And I do a lot of damage here, guys. I mean, we we do a lot. We get him down to like, what, 46 workers or something? I get three more here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Five more. Get him down to 44, which is awesome. But you've got to remember, you're only on two gateways. And, and you got, what, two gates and an immortal, and I've just thrown away all my adepts. I've left no oracles at home. And we see you, it can bite you in the butt if you're being a greedy shithead like this, right? So he just morphs banelings, which allows the wall to no longer be as strong as it once was. Obviously, I should have already had my extra gateways up as well. We're very late on that floating money. But even if we did have those extra gateways coming up, um, this is still a very scary moment. Now, if I realized there were banelings here a little sooner, got the cyber core up sooner, then I could have survived and just lost my third, which would have been acceptable, I think. It wouldn't have been great, but uh, I think it would have been acceptable. Now, I do F2 to bring the oracles home, but they're both really low on energy. It's the danger of leaving none of those at home, and the observer is so late, whereas if my observer was out earlier, I would have seen these links coming across the map. So we're already seeing how this situation should not arise. Also, that quarter debt pressure, I kind of made that up. We don't need to do that. Doing an extra double adept pressure is not a bad idea after the first one. Joining that up with your oracles, really cool bonus move. Not as important as just doing the build tight. So let's focus on the basics of the build. I'm overcomplicating things by having fun trying to throw out a billion adepts and so on. So we lose a the game there to artist, is a GM player. We don't lose a lot of MMR for it, only nine, fair enough. But GG, well played, very well played by him. Great Ling Bane counter attack. We threw everything into the harassment, and if he just sat in his corner and defended and didn't counterattack, we, we would have gotten away with it and probably been in a good spot, but we got caught out from the counterattack. Can we learn the 420 Glaive build? <clears throat> Not a fan of it. I, I really don't think it's it's the best build, I think. If you guys want, you can look it up on Spawning Tool, and I'm sure Harstam did a, a great video on it a while back, so that's probably the best place to learn from it, but... Personally, I think it's one of the most micro-intensive mechanical uh, build orders that either catches someone off guard and mashes them or, or you just get crushed. So I, I really don't think it's a, a good bronze to GM build. The, the I, I imagine you mean the Adept Prism build, right? Or do you just mean 3-gate Glaive Adept where you just shade across the map for the 420 here? Because actually, I do, I do kind of like that one. I, was, I have been thinking about teaching that one. I have been thinking about teaching that in Bronze to GM. And that is that is actually one that hits right on 420. You mean you mean the three gate one? Oh, okay. You mean this? Okay, you mean the build that I, I like? Okay. Definitely, it's a little risky in some regards that build. 
um, for certain like big speed roach counter attacks after your glaive adepts and stuff, but it is a pretty awesome macro build, and I think it has a very high ladder percent uh, win rate. I think tournament wise, it's a bit more abusable, but definitely, definitely a pretty damn good ladder build. Yeah, I like it. Why does it display the opponent's MMR? Yeah, so that's a Masters League thing, as chat's saying there. A little slow on that gas geyser. Guys, we're playing PvT. So, very important here. We're going to expand along this top edge of the map. But remember, we will be going for splash damage. Rather than uh, just going too crazy on the Master Zealot all game long like we were doing in Diamond 1. Now, we could still do it. It's the same opening. So it's still a very good way of getting there, I think. But we're going to learn the different transition. Or will we? So the reason I just said that, guys, is because this guy is one basing, isn't he? You have not enough minerals. There we go. Come back here. Let me at you. you have not I'll win this fight, bro, unless a Marine pops out. If a Marine pops out, he wins. Otherwise, we get him. Second gas. And I can build a pylon down there. It's probably a good idea. Oh, we're hot in his tail. Oh, I think I cancelled that from attacking. Ah, oh, shit. Alright, let's hide. Hide off to the side. I think that would have got the attack off on the corner. That was sloppy. Alright, guys. We're going to do the two gate robo response here to a Terran who's walling us out of his base. You guys know. Really, really just nice response where we're delaying warp gate. We're doing a super fast robo version of the build. So we go. Adept, Robo, Warp Gate, <clears throat> second gateway, and then we can go for it. Second pylon was a little late. Where shall we march? Let not. And he is actually just expanding, so it's just a two reaper. Uh, death pressure. Two Reaper Hellion pressure into expand. So guys, we can go back towards a normal build now, if we want. Or, we could do, if you want to be very aggressive, you can do a three gate, uh, prism. You could make a prism here, a third, a third gateway, a warp prism. And just do, like, stalker prism attack, and it, it would kill a lot of people. I'm not gonna do that, because we want to just go back to our normal game plan, because I strongly believe in this as a format. So if you see their macroing, get a Twilight, we want to go back to our normal game plan. I could build a shield battery here. <clears throat> um, remember these guys. I'm actually going to be very quick. If he... Okay. Oh my god. How did he get out three reapers this time? Wow, we really messed up, guys. Notice I'm targeting the Hellion, because that's the splash damage unit. Wow, I really messed up here. I got... Okay, so going towards the Twilight is good, but you still want to build gateway units three and four. And you do not want to watch the ledge. You want to be more centralized, keeping your units together. If you don't do that, you can take big damage from just small little attacks, and that's really bad. So what do we want to do now? Well, we want to take a third base to try and recover economically. So I'm getting poised to do that. Now, can I get away with that? I have no idea if I can do that or not. We're going to move there, build a pylon. We're not going to drop it, though, until we see what we're up against, okay? So the stalkers are going to see if they can do damage. Our observer will go do a full wave of pressure and behind, and then we'll decide what's up. Now, Okay, we do lose a Stalker there, he's building tanks, so we'll leave this Stalker outside. Have we got 16-3-3? Okay, let's build that third. And we see three barracks, so he's going to do a big two base push, guys. So we are going to build stuff, but it's going to be really hard to do this. Did we got a Raven out? Maybe he got a Raven out. So we're going to make another Observer to see what's up. And all we're going to do here is try and get up eight gateways, and we're going to skip the forge. Now, you might be like, why are you skipping the forge? We are behind, objectively. We took a lot of damage. We know he's committing very hard to a 3 rex play. It could be a two-base all-in. We don't know whether or not it's that. 
But whether he's taking a third command center or not, it's going to be so hard to defend that push from here. So I'm going to probe up to about 8 or 10 probes on the third, two gases, nothing else. We'll get charge, already queuing that up. And we're just going to go 8 gateways and zealots, okay? So we're going to make out about 5 blink stalkers, nothing more than that. We're making a ton of gateways here. Still probing, still probing. So let's go one more. We'll get that extra pile on. So what we're going to do is we'll use the observer on pervert mode out there so we can kind of see what's up. And maybe two more stalkers. Yeah. So these guys, six stalkers is going to be it. No more than that. Uh, we'll make a ninth gateway. And we can make a shield battery on the third and a shield battery on the natural. And other than that, guess what? Nothing else, guys. Because we're just going to make zealots, 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 zealots. Now we see some Widowmite, so I'll make another Observer just so I can have that to clear. And we're going to try to pick off the Raven when he moves out. If we can do that, that'll be a big game changer for us. And it could keep us alive in this uh, series. So we're making lots of pylons, lots of batteries to keep up that production. And we're going to try and pick off these units as he moves out, okay? Now he might go for a drop here to go around me, so I'm going to keep inching forwards little by little, just to keep an eye on him. And remember, if he doesn't come to me, well, guess what? We're going to set the Zealots up for a run by now. So we're going to set up all those Zealots for a run by. Big one. Uh, maybe, I think 10 Zealots is enough. Okay. So notice we're attacking the zealots across the map. The raven should go down. Oh, we're just A-moving, A-moving, A-moving. I'm not looking at the zealots at all because this was all about the distraction so that this could work out. And notice we're trying to fight away from those auto turrets as much as possible. Oh my god, so many auto turrets. Is this gonna... This might be too much stuff for him. But no, the Zealots have killed him at home! So I did a defensive all in this game, guys, and it's worked out. That's essentially what this build is, in case you guys are wondering. That's how you think it is. It's a defensive all in. Now we can think about taking a fourth, think about going double forge. But I think we're just going to win the game right here. So I'm sending a probe to the fourth location, all that sort of stuff. Oh, we trapped him on his ramp, guys! That's awesome. And you can see we managed to get it. Woo! So a defensive all-in is basically where you just... You know you can't kill their army at home. But you're kind of using your knowledge of their build and their style to say, look, he's always going to do some sort of push if he goes three racks before third command center. Stim, shields, tanks, stim, shields, mines, medevacs. Some variety of this. And I've taken way too much damage. I'm in a really shit position. So I skip the forge. Don't take don't even start the fourth nexus. I cut some things out of my build and I do nothing but make zealots, 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 zealots. And I set up with a counter attack to cut off his reinforce. If he's solid at home, we would have pulled those zealots back to flank his army. And because that distracts him so much though, what it ended up being is his army kind of just shoved across the map. He preemptively stimmed a whole bunch of times and we were able to just kind of jump on his army and essentially a move it, right? So the Stalkers were kind of pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. The Zealots went in behind, and this was all planned beforehand. Now keep in mind, guys, if our opponent scans our natural and sees no gases, or does like a drop or two and realizes we have mass gate, no tech, no forge, we're pretty screwed. It's a defensive all-in, because there's no way I'm ever going to break his ramp 
I'm down 20 supply right now. And even with massing zealots, my army's not going to be getting better quicker than his army's getting better. So all he needs to do is obviously just take his third base, build up his army. He's winning the game. So there is nothing he needs to... He does not need to take the fight to me. But the Terran is in an information void, right? He's sitting in his corner and he's following a plan that he'd chosen to do before the game even started. And this is what Terran players do. Terran players click a lot faster than Protoss players, but Protoss players use their scouting in their brain. Now, that's because we're smarter than Terran players. It's definitely not because we have a thousand more scouting tools that don't cost nearly as much as using scans for scouting. But uh, yeah, he can win even being behind a base. He's ahead. He's ahead. So I know he, he's down a base, but number one, guys, look at the worker count. I'm on 51 probes. He's on 48. And he's using those workers efficiently, right? So what does this give me? I have more income on minerals than him, but nothing else. And even on the minerals with the mules accounted for, remember he has mules dropping off two command centers. So I've got slightly more minerals a minute, half the gas. And he can take a third, land it. And as if he's building SCVs the whole time, he can fully saturate it instantly. All right. So basically if he was doing it, some widow mine drops or some stuff or was more active or had a reaper jumping in, Seeing a lot of gateways, but no forges, seeing no robo base, and most importantly, no gases on the natural or the third base. It tells him I don't have any longevity. My style here of mass zealot, especially without even having forge upgrades, this is spilt milk. If you quickly lick it up in the next three seconds, if I can get a fight in the next two minutes of this game, awesome. If I can't, and I have to attack into his wall, or I have to make an awkward lumbering transition into, it's eight minutes in the game and I'm gonna start taking gas only now, it's terrible for me. It's spilt milk. It's, it's instantly going off. There's already bacteria growing in it. It's absolute crap. We, we do not want to drink milk off the floor that's been sitting there for a day or two. It's not a good idea. It's a bad life choice. And that's kind of my composition. But because most Terran players, especially if they go three arcs like that, they're going to do a big push somewhere between 6 minutes 30 and 9 minutes. I was like, we're just going to go all in on that and just make zealots, make zealots, make zealots, make zealots. And... Um, he thankfully gives me this engagement, right? Because our stalkers are kind of annoying him. He's pre-stemming. These zealots A move in. I didn't micro these for even a moment, guys. Not even a moment. And he I don't think he did too much at home either. But they're, they're, they're gonna, you know, just distract him. And he's like stimming and blah, blah, blah. Now I should have done guardian shield here, but look, I, I got him to bait it all the way into battery overcharge. I should have killed that raven here. If I, but I'd already used blink to run backwards, so I couldn't blink forwards. Even here, if I blinked and sniped it down, it would have been very, very good. But you can see that basically that fight goes really badly for him. Because his fight's more his army is more technical than mine. He needs to drop auto turret, stim, siege, all this sort of stuff. So we just caught him off guard. And that, that was what the whole strategy was, right? It was distract with the zealots, catch him off guard, and this was kind of the perfect time to fight, where I'd stop building probes for a few minutes. I'd gotten a few rounds of zealots out. So my army was hitting a hit peak army point. Where the longer it goes, he's going to get a third down, he's going to add more upgrades, ghosts, all that sort of stuff, and we'd be in a big problem. Yeah. So he didn't siege until the zealots were already on him, and even if he did, we, like, we, we would have been able to flank him and jump on him, and it would have been hard for him to siege in the right position, stutter step his bio, and all that sort of stuff. Isn't Immortal a good investment? I don't think so. I, I think the Immortal is like the best unit in the game if you can get it to land hits on Marauders and Tanks. So if you use the Maraud if you use the Immortal expertly, it is actually really worth it. But because I'm a baboon, I very rarely build it unless I've got a bit of excess money. And that's because I too often end up with that Immortal just hitting Marines, stumbling around, getting stuck behind other units. So I, I, I don't enjoy it as much. Um, I think the Immortal, if you're very good at microing, especially if you go three or four sentries, have a pack of Stalkers, two Immortals, three or four sentries, that becomes a really good ranged army that can skirmish with the bio, force field units off. But in this sort of situation, I prefer a much simpler army of just, you know, the mass sell it. So should he have just expanded? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, we should look at the early game. Sorry, guys. I should definitely look at the early game there. My bad. My bad. Um, I, the Twilight Council, like I said, I should have just built two more gateway units to be safe. I saw the expansion. And, I, and then I, I really disrespected the fact that he, he did do a marine factory opening. I should have respected this. I should have respected this opening and uh, built a third and fourth gateway unit straight away. Yeah. 
Yeah, he should have just expanded and built up his army. Sent some drops, some squads around to make sure I wasn't waiting with Zealot run buys. That's a really important move. A lot of Terran players don't do enough. Okay, so already we lost two probes at the start. So that already tells us, guys, if you lose two probes, there's, there's no reason why that should happen. So was our cyber core late? What happened? Let's check. I think our cyber core was on time, but our pylon was late, if memory serves. Yeah, our cyber core was on time. But the pylon's late. Yeah, yeah, because then I build it on the natural as well. It's like that pylon needs to go down now. Yeah, so the pylon was late, so that delayed my adept by like five seconds. So already, guys, if you're going to build the pylon on the low ground, send that probe down ahead of time. Otherwise, just build it on the high ground. It's not a big deal. So that lost me two probes early. And then afterwards, get the Ray Robo the second gate. Our probe went back in and actually scouted what was up. So if I just make another stalker here and then another stalker, I'm safe. And people have been saying, hey, what about shield battery? Shield battery is really nice. Don't get me wrong. So if you didn't build a two gate robo, absolutely get a battery, but I've got two gateways. I might as well just get extra gateway units out that can completely shut the units down. Cause if I build a battery here, but he runs into my main, I'm still taking damage, right? So if I built two more gateway units there immediately, chronoed them even, then we could be ready for this. And that stalker should not have been so far out, I don't think. So we lose a stalker, a probe, and adapt and not that probe somehow survives on reddit points another bunch of probes oh my god oh yeah that was a lot of mining time we, we actually could have that could have been a lot worse if we didn't focus the hellions down that would have been even worse a lot of those damaged probes would have died so that could have been game over right there fam that could have been game over ggs so let's make sure we uh we build at least four gateway units even if they're getting a command center there and I'm not saying shield battery is wrong. It's just my natural inclination is to get more units out and shut things down. That's my choice. If you guys want to do a shield battery version, do it, account for it, go for it. But you're more likely to want to be delaying your second gateway, I think, if you do that. Because you can just chrono units off one gateway. If you're getting a robo, you're going to get a battery. Yeah. You can also block the ramp with like an Adept and a Stalker, Google Steiger. If you do pylon battery, creating a semi-wall with your Nexus, you can kind of block them running up into your main with your Adept and Stalker as well, potentially, right? So you don't necessarily need the Sentry. Especially because you'll often be doing a hallucination if you go Sentry, so you might not even have a force field. Oh my god, this is my first PvP in so long! It's been so long! Well, guess what, guys? We're going to be doing that same safe expand, but we're going to be doing it into a quicker third base is the build order. Now, this is my first time doing the master's variation of the build, so I'll make sure I get that document open on my second computer here so that I don't forget anything. Opponent's name is uh, Kaizi. I did not realize that I said good luck, have fun twice. That's my mistake. All right, guys, PvP. Here it is. Because we want to go, I think, Twilight Council. Whoops. I'm gonna get the wrong right up. Ooh, sorry guys. Scrolling through my document for a moment. Okay. Slightly awkward here. I was looking at the uh, the diamond uh, one version of the build and was super confused for a moment. I was like, what just happened? I was like, why? This is not the build order. But... Okay. All right. No wall off for him, so he's going to be letting adepts right into his base, which sometimes is a terrible mistake and sometimes is not too bad. Cybercore. Oops, gateways are there. And my guy's just checking around. Just check to see where the pylons are, guys. And let's pull that up. Okay. Okay, so we've got two on gas. We see he's building a second pylon. Oh, this looks like a very normal build. You must construct additional pylons. Um, and we'll get ready to build a pylon on the low ground right after starting the stalker sentry, I guess. Yeah, we'll just do it straight away, why not? Alright, so we get the sentry, warp gate, 
Probably want to build the Stalker pretty quickly normally as well. Obviously you're a little gas starved at first, which is part of why that's difficult. Um, I'm going to build like one or two more probes here, because we're only at 24 going on 25. Uh, does look like an expand build from the opponent. We'll hide this probe out there. And we want to go for two more Stalkers, guys. So there we go. Two more Stalkers are queued up. If we want, we could cancel that one, get the Nexus down, and then do it. It doesn't really matter too much. As long as your Nexus is down by three minutes, you will be okay. There we go. Fourth Stalker starts up. And we'll put this Stalker out front so it can see what's up. Alright, so once you get the Nexus down, you do want to go straight for that Twilight Council. Because we're building four gateway units, we don't need to rush our shield battery or anything like that. Oh! That was meant to be a force field. Ah! You guys didn't see that. I mean, a hallucination. You guys didn't see that, okay? Alright, so we're going to try and get these adepts. That's real awkward, man. I'm gonna build pylon down here, and then this guy can go there. So normally you'd have a hallucination going across the map by now, and that would obviously give you a lot of info. We're then gonna go for a forge. Now I'm really surprised that his adepts aren't still out here. Kind of like what? And he does have a nexus. It's a little slower than mine, though. Let's build that shield battery. Which, like I said, because I'm constantly building units, it's not the most important thing in the world, but it does add up at a certain point. Okay. We can make Blink and Chrono Boost it. And pull the extra guys down there. And we can finally send that hallucination across, which if we're going, you know, he's going DTs or something, we, we lose the game here, specifically because... We messed this up. Now, we do want to build more sentries once Warp Gate's finished. You want to make two more. So that should have been two sentries. That would allow me to do basically non-stop uh, hallucinations. <clears throat> now, we see third gateway and a Stargate. So it looks like our opponent might do something very aggressive. Because that's a lot of production, building combat units, right? So I'm going to make one more sentry just so I can keep scouting. I was going to go for a third base, but we are reacting here to our opponent. And we're going, nope, let's get four gateways. Let's get a third gas. We can go for that a little bit later, okay? Extra pylon powering the thingamajig. We're going to send a hallucination. Okay, so we're going to go... Boop, doot, doot. So we're going here, then down here to check this base, and then coming in to check the gases. Engaging the enemy. And you can see, yeah, he's coming in with what appears to be a very powerful, or at least very committed, attack. This could be absolutely huge. Um, Blink is not quite ready yet, so we just chrono that. We're chronoing plus one. So we pulled the probes there, guys, just to make sure we're okay. And it looks like he's overcommitted for sure. So this is the power of hallucinations, even though my first one was obviously very late. And he's going to try and pull back, but there's no way, man. So just a very simple timing attack from my opponent. But he didn't proxy anything. We saw a third gateway and a stargate building void rays. Void rays, aggressive unit. Could be defensive, but combined with a third gateway, obviously it's like, oh, this is some form of like three gate gateway all in. Um, he hid pylons for some reason around and could have had six gateways if he was going to do this attack this late. But we just changed our plan from dropping the quick third when we saw that, dropped two more gateways instead, dropped an extra shield battery and just focused on stalkers, pylons, stalkers, pylons. Maybe we could have built an extra gateway or two, but I figured with just four gates, uh, maybe dropping a chrono or two on the gateways would have been nice. We were going to be able to defend that really well. So the important thing with the opening, though, is don't do a random force field accidentally. First of all, that was derpy. But uh, after the first sentry stalker, you go two stalkers, then nexus. And then I, I'm, I, you know, I 
think if I do a chrono on warp gate, we don't need to squeeze in the next two stalkers. So after these two pop, right, I squeeze two more stalkers in here. Because warp gate's kind of late. I think if I'd chrono boosted it, I would be much happier to just let warp gate finish. So let's put that in the build order. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right. PVP. Nexus shield battery at natural doesn't need to go down because we're building four units until after Twilight Council. So we can get a shield battery at natural just for insurance there. Um, chrono warp gate once. And then basically it's four gateway units. So when warp gate finishes, two sentries then non-stop stalkers. That way we have three sentries, four stalkers, and then non-stop stalkers from there would be really safe. Could he rush blink to bypass your batteries? He'd need something to spot the high ground, because where's he going to blink to to get past the battery? Because you, you're going to intercept his army out front the shield batteries. The best he can do is blink on top of your units then. So, I mean, if someone's bypassing batteries with blink, they would need to spot the high ground, blink up into the main base, or which means they've got to open up Robotech or something else as well. So that would be a bit of a later attack because they're investing in Blink and either a Hallucination or an Observer or something like that to get up to the high ground. So um, it's just a matter of, yeah, it's going to be that. No Chrono in the first two Stalkers? No, no reason. It's a Stalker and a Sentry and we're just being defensive with it. So um, we do want to Chrono Warp Gate once. Uh, we want to Chrono Blink a lot. Chrono Blink a lot. <laughs> chrono Blink and plus one. A lot. How do you make a probe go back and forth with the blue line? That's patrol, Grundy. That's patrol. So you'll see me use that when I'm like setting up an oracle above the units. How do you do that? You use the patrol command. Depends what hotkey setup you're using, what hotkey layout. But uh, P would be the default, which is really shit. The standard hotkey for patrol is terrible. But uh, down here is your command card. Make sure you turn off uh, simple command card if you if you don't see many buttons. You see? It tells you what hotkey it is for each one of them. All your basic commands are always there, mate. Guys, we're up against LTK Haffy, whose MMR seems to have dropped down to just 4,700. I feel like I've played Haffy a bunch on my main account, but I remember him being higher than that. A little odd. Pylons maybe a few seconds later than it should be. Guys, we are playing Protoss versus Zerg. Now, this is a really small map. So this is one of the harder maps, I would say, to defend some ground-based assaults. But because Queens can't walk anymore, we have got the Oracles for safety overhead. I think it should be just fine. Now, notice I move past the gateway just so it kind of pushes me out when I place that. It's such a minute detail that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. But just, you know... Just kind of cool, rather than if I built it from here, the probe gets pushed to the back. It takes a few seconds longer to get across the map. I like details. Details are fun. Pig, I have questions. No, you don't. I know if you're saying I have questions, Memeling, you just want to share basically a story about you cheesing someone. We know at this point, mate. You've, you've used it too many times. You've got to mix up your misdirections, otherwise they're not misdirections, mate. I'm onto you, Memeling. Hope you're doing good, dude. He's like, uh, after I go mut Mutalisks into Swarm Host, uh, Ultralisk Nidus, uh, and then I backstab a guy and he calls me this name, and I'm like, I get it, you just want to brag. I, it's fine, just brag. You don't need to, don't need to preface it with anything, it's all good. It's all good, mate. We all like a good little braggy brag once in a while. <laughs> Should I stop probing at 100 or 110 versus Terran when I'm going zealot only? You see, I told you guys! He just wants to tell us that he went 110 probes recently, or 100 probes. Up to you, dude. Honestly, I see has to both. I actually, like, actual serious, I have no idea. I don't know. Whatever you prefer, my dude. Uh, I, think, I think 100 probes is probably more than enough. But uh, I have seen Haas go to 110. Which is, is kind of nice, isn't it? Uh, oh, did we make warp gate? Yes, we did. Oh, my stargate's a little delayed this game, guys. So that's a bit sloppy. We got distracted by Mr. Memeling. It's all your fault, Memeling. This build is bad now. It's your fault. Just kidding. It's all good. Um, okay, guys, so we're going to chrono two adepts across the map. Yes, the oracle will be a little slower, but that's 
Okay, we still are going to drop a chrono on the natural. And we will, of course, queue up a third adept momentarily. And let's make another adept. Glory to the day long. Give us your command. It shall be done. For the law. The test fire shall be delayed. Forward. Oh, got it. So you make it that. Always make a pylon, guys. When you make the oracle. And then we can go second gateway. And this guy can be here. Awesome. And now we're going to dive with these two adepts. We let the shields regen. We also put the tanky one up front. And we want to try and shade into that main base. The Templar. Okay, so we see a lair. Right now, we don't know what it's about, right? So, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to play two base. So we're going to do the same thing we normally do, but we're going to do it on two base after, these two, after this oracle. Okay? Now, I don't know if that's good or not. Good, bad, whatever. I will make one or one phoenix to... I see. I see more drones popping out, which tells us that it's not just a... An all in for my opponent. Oh, run, 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 run. Nah, he's gonna die. So that, that's good. That is actually very important info. So because of that, I will still try to see the third base. Now, obviously this is still kind of dangerous because... Glory to the day The firstborn shall persevere. Give us your command. Okay. Make immortals. Now let's get these gateways. So, we basically just modified the build order because I thought he might two base all in with like a Nidus or something. And I was like, oh, we should probably just get stuff up on two bases, you know. But uh, as it is, we're just kind of still trying to get up to the next step. And I think it's going to be Lurkus, to be honest. And we're just going to shift quick on these drones. And, okay, let's make some sentries. Still don't know what the hell's going on. Let's try to do this one, get another immortal out. Keep making probes. And it is just, it's two base Hydra. Oh, he watched the Serral VOD. What's this Serral's thing? This looks like Serral's thing. Oh! Where did these guys come from? It's like here with like five Hydras and 20 Zerglings. What the hell? Okay, well done. <laughs> Distracted myself. Well done. Well done, well done. Oh my god. So guys, the problem is I'm gonna get the various supply blocks here. Why do you people that watch... I don't know if you watch Serral's uh, stream to see it, or if you watch my VOD casting it. But either way, surprising two-base Hydra timing. So if I'd just built units a bit better, we would have been safer. But this is interesting, because this shows us how to... like. This is such an odd scenario that I don't have mapped out at all, where I'm like, well, yeah, how do you play against someone who's playing like this, right? It's kind of weird, man. All right, so we're going to send the Phoenix around. Um, I do think... Man, if we just had, like, a shield battery there, I actually think with battery overcharge we hold that attack, to be fair. I'm kind of annoyed at myself now. <laughs> uh, um, I think we're going to make Psystorm. Yeah. Just because I feel like now he transitions into a proper macro game. You know? 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna chrono probes, and we're also gonna make a billion high templar while trying to defend with like very little stuff. And yeah. Awesome. Oh shit, you're fucking kidding me. Oh my god. He's forgotten to unload it? Or is it a fake? I don't even know. We shall stand the skies await. Oi! He's got the circuits in there. Mother. As if he got the third snipe. I was trying to hide my guys. And my observer didn't quite catch the move out. Alright. Well done, well done, well done. Okay, we've got Archons. We're gonna make a Robo Bay here because you know what he's gonna go for, guys. It's gonna go for Lurkers, 100%. It's not even a question. Um, we're gonna put Workers in a Stalker in the Natural Wall just to try and do that. We're gonna keep on harassing here. That goes there. These guys go there. That goes there. Just kill a Creep Tumor or two. Banelings. Oh, that's alright. It's not too bad then. Mineral field depleted. Okay. You go there, you go there. Okay, we're gonna make disruptors now. We've got Okay, we've got the Observer, so we're going to keep trying to clear creep. Hello? Come on, mate. The trick is we've got to hit before he gets to, um... Before he gets brood lords, which is what I was expecting. Playing from just too far behind. Damn it. Ah, try to get the Oracle out as that budget detection right now. You guys see and try. I'm trying to go Super Saiyan mode, but we're dead. We're dead. We're completely dead. There's always a chance to make a comeback, man. There's always a chance with disruptors. 
GG, well played. Super fucking confusing build. I don't think it's very good though, especially if you take damage the way he did. I feel, you, so the big mistake he made early was leaving the queens in the main. When I watched Cyril do this, I was like, I guess this is an acceptable build order, but in general, I have always been very disposed against two base openings. Um, unless you're gonna pull off something really cheeky and cheesy. This feels kind of like a Mio Mica build, where the moment Protoss players understand the build, it's not gonna work. So obviously it's kind of a cute way of getting up to Hydras. You get your tech pretty quickly. The trick is though, you need to leave this queen in the main. You can't send the three queens to the front. You have to hug the mineral lines. But I guess it was my adepts that kind of got him pulling to the front. But yeah, man, I guess the adepts did quite a lot of damage. And then we also had the Oracle stacking on top of that. Anyways. If your opponent's two basing, I think it's really important to dive with the Adepts and the Oracles because we at least were confirming there was a lot of drones. So we knew there wasn't, like if we went in with our Adepts, we saw no drones. Oh shit, build a shield battery, wall off, yada yada. But I kept seeing like, oh, you're droning, you're droning. And I'm doing damage, which is also slowing down whatever you're doing. So from here, I could have just gone two base Immortal Charge Archon. Absolutely could have done that, right? Phoenix denies Overlord Scouts. Build Immortals, make charge, go at gateways, and then take a third base. And that would have been completely solid and safe, right? I think that makes perfect sense. I tried to be what we call a greedy shithead. And that's where you try and get ahead rather than just play safe because you really like um, just having a massive economy advantage. So here we go. Verse two base macro build. Scout it by seeing no third, but also lots of drones. Just maybe a quicker layer than usual. But nothing too crazy, right? Just skip the third base and do the exact same thing on two base. Then take the third only after going to eight gates full, you know, Templar Archives, Immortals Buildings, etc. And that's just a really good rule. So the next time I see a two base Zerg, rather than going, ah, what do I do? And then being a greedy shithead who takes a third and kind of makes an intuitive response, I say, well, a much easier response than kind of going two base, but then still taking the third before getting the gateways. And then because of that delaying immortal production, I'm not really able to use the robo straight away, you see. So what I could have done here, guys, is I very well could have just said, get the immortal going there, start making some sentries, get up some extra gateways. Oh, okay, we're up to eight gateways. Now we can move out and take the third, the immortal, a handful of sentries, and we've got eight gateways coming up, Templar archives coming down, and we can just absolutely destroy it. Is there a, Terran, a document for Terran and Zerg Bronze to jam? Yep, every single video has it linked in the YouTube description, SC Jax. You could always just hit like, uh, yeah, Z B D G M T B D G M, and go to any of those videos or the YouTube playlist and I'll have any further. Can I send you, can I send you this replay? Says Booyah. Sure. DM me on Discord right now, dude. I mean, he really mass. He was really late on everything because he took so much damage, right? We even had another pair of adepts that decided to come across and kill like seven probes. This is drones. This is actually insane, guys. I killed like 20 workers. Like this should have been completely game over, but I'm an idiot. I think I've killed 20 workers, right? This game. 18. Six minutes, 18 workers killed for four adepts and an oracle. Holy shit. But then I'm like, if I had a shield battery here, I still defend this because it's just such a weak attack because it's just a handful of hydras, right? And my gateways are coming up. So if I had a battery to overcharge here, I would have been fine. But that would have been me towing the line of greed as exceptionally far as I possibly could. That would have been me pushing my greed to the absolute limit where it's not greed that should work versus a two base player, two base player doing this build. It's the very line of greed that I can get away with versus a two base player who's also taken a shitload of damage from me. That's not something that we should be doing as a standard thing, right? By any means. So obviously, uh, yeah. Very dicey play, my friend. Oh my god, if I even just had warped in a few zealots, this is like a handful of hydras. I could have fought with probes and like six zealots and we beat that army. 
Sloppy piggy. Sloppy. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. Woo! Alright, we got a PvP! We did start to lose some games here, which was a lot of fun. Um, doing some build orders I'm not quite as used to and stuff has been really interesting. Because this is like a good chance for me to like learn the build orders and, and go over the details of them. But uh, yeah, we're having a good time. Can I use Master's builds in Plat? You can use any build anywhere. How successful it'll be comes down to how you execute it, how your opponents are playing, a bunch of other stuff, of course, but uh, generally speaking, sure, you can always jump ahead and do things. I'd always advise people go check out Bronze to GM from start to finish, of course, especially if you're a lower level. Thank you, everyone, for helping us out with that level 3 hype train just before, by the way. Um, very much appreciate it. Awesome. Guys, all right. <clears throat> Do the second chrono boost soon. We scout off to the gateway. No such thing as a bronze build. Yeah, it's at bronze. It's more like, hey, do you know how to press the buttons, right? No offense to bronze players, but like, let's be real. We're always trying to go one racks expand. Uh, is that, what, is that what it is, Pig? Is it, a, is it a barracks that he's got? Is that what Protoss built at the start? Is it a barracks? So I saw he, he didn't have a gas and was going to go for a one, one gate expand. So that's why I'm trying to block it, guys. <clears throat> but now he's gone Cybercore, a Zealot, and I think I'm going to build a pylon just to be annoying. I just figure why not? So this is not something where we really need to do this, guys. Um, but I figure the probes here anyway, we might as well micro it around to be annoying. And I'm not going to commit a lot to do this or anything like that. I could build a cyber core here as well and really commit, but I don't think it's really necessary. I'm just trying to be annoying. Now I'm going to do a two stalker pressure, guys, because I don't think there's any need to really... Um I don't think there's any need to... I could actually have... Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's fine. Um, I don't think there's any need to really build a sentry because, I mean, he's on one gate. What can he do? I guess he could build a stargate in the main. But we'll build two sentries after this anyway, okay? So we're going to go stalker, stalker. We'll get a nexus down. In a moment. There we go. Send the stalkers to poke the front. So hopefully that forces him to build, like, a void ray or something like that. And then we go sentries, because they're very gas-heavy, but mineral light. So we can afford them, even though we just invested in a nexus, which is really cool. Now, if he comes with an adept, that would be kind of frustrating. But we've got a guy on duty at the wall. Get the twilight there. And hopefully he's had to build, like, a shield battery and all this sort of stuff, right? Yeah. Look, he had to build a shield battery, two stalkers. Hard for him to afford a Stargate if he's building two Stalkers, isn't it? And look, we can do this. You A-move the probes, and then you just pull back the one that he hits. Easy micro. Not a problem. Barely barely an inconvenience. Um, that's what they say. So you want to get a Forge? Blink. And we still don't know what he's up to, keep in mind. So we're keeping our units in a nice central position. We're going to go up there. And we have a stalker there and a stalker there. They're all on the same hotkey. So it's not like it's the most prepared. But I figured just having something in position will be really nice if it doesn't have any that. And because we go three sentries, remember what does three sentries give us, gang? We can build a shield battery as well, just in case something crazy comes our way. We don't really need it, though. Um, it gives us endless hallucinations. So I don't even really need that shield battery to be real, guys. He's only building a second gateway now. So why would we need a shield battery? I've got two gateways. I'm actually the guy with more units right now. And because I see Twilight Forge, I think it's very unlikely that he's gone like DTs or something. I'll check anyway. But we're going to go across the map and uh, pressure with just my handful of units. While Chrono Boosting Blink. Plus one. Now he might have Blink earlier than me, so we do have to be a little careful. But I think the fact that he's down on units um, will make it okay. Now, we've already got a pylon on the way there. We take a third gas and then a robo. This third gas and robo are kind of together in the build because I'm a little bit broke. I'm just kind of doing one at a time. And you see, we take him. Okay, cool. 
So we kind of scared him there. And now we just run home. And you want to get the shield battery on my third instead. So you see, this is part of why I didn't want to be um, investing in that. Didn't want to be investing in a battery on my natural, because I'm like, well, it's actually the third base that I want to defend, right? Yeah, that is a fake. I thought so. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is a fake, but... Just in case, I will send this hallucination to see what's up. See, natural saturated, so now we're rally to the third. We want to go up to uh, eight gateways and charge next. So you get your third and fourth gateway. See, his third's just started. Mine's already well underway. I'm going to send another hallucination to check out his tech. Do some chrono on the probes. I'll make an observer. And yeah, basically we're going to go for the... Uh, this is the, the Zealot Stalker style, right? That's what this is. We see a robo. So robo, a sentry being built, lots of stalkers. I don't see any sign that this could be Dark Templar. And he's also playing a three gas style, which is interesting. Okay, so we're going to make a warp prism. Now we're going to play a real... Um, just a few more probes here, by the way. So we're going to play a very low tech style, but with lots of expansions, which is a really cool way to do it. Now, obviously, we could just do a big timing attack off three base, and that's probably one of the best ways to do this, to be honest. Which, it's all right. He's got my back there. He's, he's going to force the fight for me. We got charge on the way. Thanks for the bait. Okay, try to get a four. Okay, gonna try and put an observer. Oh. So I'm going to just send a little zealot run by in over here. Oof. We're going to try and um, keep skirmishing with his stalkers if we can. But just what to distract him. Like, not for really any other reason. Oh man, charge isn't done. Shit. All right, I really want to fight him, so I think we're going to do that, guys. I'm trying to blink back some weak units as they take damage and stuff, but... Uh, this does feel a little bit awkward, that's for sure. These zealots here are going to try to run in the natural as well. This got really messy, um, and that's the power of attacking. So I think what we learned this game is we should always probably go forward and just pressure and take the fourth behind uh, an attack that's somewhat planned, and it's just going to make our life a bit easier. I think I lost both my observers, so I'm a little worried about DTs right now. So notice I'm just trying to take efficient fights here as best I can. So you can see we're just kind of trying to take these fights. And there we go. If we can kill that cannon, that'll be big. So we've still only got eight gateways, which is obviously not good because we're starting to bank up stuff. We could have started plus one armor as well. It would have been a nice way to do it. Really good fight, so this game got a little chaotic, but I think we see the power of, even if you're going for a fourth base, keep it simple with Zealot Stalker. And I think if there's one thing we're learning in Masters 3 and uh, in Diamond, Diamond 1 and stuff, it's taking lots of bases with lots of minerals and making lots of Zealots and Stalkers is way better than you think it is. And um, I think there's too many Protoss players who, who never learn how to do this, because this is also something that's really powerful to do when you're behind in any matchup. Real simple economy. Pure mineral, pure zealot. 
And then how do you find an engagement, right? And it's a very different sort of engagement to a splash damage engagement, but it's still, you know, definitely a skill set is, is figuring out how to do that. And remember, with this style, guys, we would just play Zealot Stalker all game long. We would eventually add a DT Shrine and Blink. That would be all we'd do. Now, as you get up to a fourth, you do want to start building a few more cannons and batteries around your bases. So if you can get, like, make sure you have one cannon, one battery in each base. And then once they start doing, like, big DT run buys and big Zealot attacks, obviously you can do more than that. But even just doing, like, or you can even think about it this way. So sometimes you want to do it like this. Where it's like that cannon is almost completely walled in, so they need to kill other buildings just to get to it. That can be really nice as well. And um, let's go back and look at that nice little stalker timing he did on me, because that really did some good damage. Um, so let's take a look at this. But, so we were going for a pretty gruesomely fast third, and we had an economy advantage, and he was like, hey, let's just go to a stalker pressure. And this is a low risk pressure. Because notice he's left any sentries he has at home. He just doesn't have any sentries, eh? He's got one. He's left one sentry at home. Where even is it? Where is it? There it is, in the main. <laughs> so he's only got one sentry, right? But but he's just like, hey, I'll run forward, see if I can do some damage with my stalkers. I'll just blink away. So getting forward with your stalkers, I think, is a really good plan and a good idea that you should always do. Now, he's only now coming up to, like, what, eight gateways? I'm already on eight gateways. I, sh I was definitely a bit slow to start charge, but if I was warping in stalkers nonstop, I could have had just as many or more stalkers than him. And I could be doing the same thing now. Run in, one shot the pylon, they're depowered, you know, start picking off probes, blink away, um, and then take the fourth behind it. So I think that's actually a really good thing that we can kind of learn here. So let's watch this from his point of view. He's a little behind, of course, um, but that's okay. Ah! Whoa. Showing private messages. Oh no, you guys know that Bully is actually a vampire. Chaos Cloud, thank you for the Prime Gaming sub, mate. Welcome to the pigsty. Where'd it go? Here we go. All right, so check it out. PVP, right? Notes versus two base macro build, blah, blah, blah. That's PVZ, sorry. PVP, let's go up here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, um, and then we can have some, some PVP notes, right? PVP notes. Um, so what was the, the particular thing that I wanted to say here? It was basically like, yeah, I think it's it's generally a good idea to off three base saturation, always commit to at least one to two rounds of warp ins and get aggressive to see if you can pick off units, grab some, you know, probes for free, Sniper Nexus, etc., and get information on what your opponent's doing. You can also snipe OBS while doing this, right? If you bring this up across with your observer, you're sniping their observers, you're winning the vision battle, right? That's that's huge. For the follow-up, you can then only then take a fourth base uh, and probe it behind that. <clears throat> go to 12 gates etc so i think that's a really you know 12 gates charge i think that's a really good just general note for is like let's actually make sure we do something because if we're just expanding and defending all the way to full base onwards there's too many chances of things coming out and surprising us or our opponent getting away with some really silly greed or something like that yeah pvp notes drop dt trying and win the game uh, he built he built cannons and some observers. He was all right about DTs. As was I. I had my robot pretty quickly. Pretty quick. I do want to point out one thing with the scouting, actually. So when I'm hallucinating, right? So, so when I'm hallucinating, when I get in here, guys, what am I looking at? Well, one thing is, is there stuff missing? So if I just saw a twilight but no forge... I would be much more inclined to split a probe or a stalker and go search this whole bottom side of the map for proxies, right? And maybe do the same on the top. Because why? Because I'd be like, dude, he could be going DTs. He could have a DT shrine proxy. I only see three stalkers. Imagine I don't see a sentry and I only see a twilight. I'd be like, where's your gas going? What's going on? There's, there's something hidden. There's something missing. But if I see someone with like three sentries, a gateway, a forge, a twilight, I'm like, there is 100% no gas they could have squeezed anywhere else at all yeah you can have dts at like three minutes 40 
not on two base, right? 340? Guess you can do like a slow, a warp in at like what? What's the earliest you can warp in DTs on two base? Probably, probably 340. That's like a super, super sick timing. Yeah. One base would be about 345 warp in. Yeah. Do you reckon a lot of people actually die to one base DT in PvP? Have you been doing it, Maxan? How's it go? I, I, I mean, I'm sure some people die to it. Especially if everyone's just not hallucinate scouting properly. You proxy it? You pro as long as you proxy the DT shrine, right? Because a lot of people don't notice missing information, right? So they come in, they see a Twilight Council, they're like, Totally normal build! This guy has two stalkers, a zealot, and a Twilight Council! This is totally normal! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you're proxying a DT Shrine in the third gate. It's blatantly obvious. Blatantly obvious if you actually pay attention to what your scouting is, but... Because there should be things there, man. And, and if, if you guys are ever struggling, well, my, oh, I don't know at what time, blah, blah, blah. Guys, just look at your own base. I have a Forge, a Twilight, three Sentries, and two Stalkers. If he only has three Stalkers and a Twilight, no Forge, no Sentries, how do I have, like, 500 more gas than my opponent, right? So these are, these are actually really simple comparisons you guys can make, and you can improve your game sense if you're a bit flustered with what the timing is and stuff. It's not like I memorize the time. I'm just like, hey, this is the point where I have three sentries. Why do you have none? You know, that can be a question. Um, that sort of stuff. Yeah. All right, very nice. You can see this third base does go down very quickly with this build, guys. Two gas third into the robo for third gas. And this, I think, is really good because this meshes with the comparison from that earlier game where the guy did a big attack to us. And instead of getting the third, I went third and fourth gateway, third gas, started thinking about the robo, and uh, went for the third a lot later and defended the all-in. All right, so we're going to be doing uh, Oracle opening. All right. Alright, we're playing against LTK Ant Mantis. And guys, remember, this is going to be uh, two Oracle opening into that lovely timing attack that we love so much. Oh, what server are we on? That feels very laggy. Oh, I must have a worse connection through my 5G. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this doesn't feel as smooth. My other connection's been so good lately. It's been so good, man. Been spoiled. Being spoiled, man. Oh, um, I could also start blocking people's expansions, right? In uh, Masters 2. Just an extra thing, just to throw off their opening a little bit. What do you guys think? So I know some people are like, hey, why don't you do that? Isn't that good? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yep. Oh, hello. Guys, check it out. Okay. Let's build a second pylon. Second gateway and cyber core. Now you can just attack that with probes. And he's going gas pool. Okay. And I still want to build up. Let's chrono boost zealots. Okay. So I'm just going to build zealots off two gates, guys. So we're going to do this kind of like a cheese response, but because he's gone hatch gas pool, this guy's just going to block him expanding behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Good choice, sir. Um, so we're just going to make a few zealots and then potentially stalkers now. We'll patrol as well just to see if he takes the other bases while blocking his base. So basically the idea here is, look, if I can't expand, you can't expand. These are, these are the rules. Our pylon is under attack. We'll make a stalker next. Obviously, if he wants to expand elsewhere, that's fine. But yeah. Now, he's building a queen. You can tell by how much the hatchery is throbbing. I know that sounds like a joke. I swear it's not, guys. Now, I am making... I'm not making warp gate because we want to make a stargate. And we're just going to send that probe home now. Okay. Notice we run away from the broodlings. 
We're gonna make a stargate. Keep building probes. And he's gonna clear all that out. So good on him. I'm gonna make some adepts. And we're just gonna try and kill this egg. And he's gonna try and just delay me a little bit longer, which is fine. Now he was on one base for a long time there. Now you guys know that sending the zealots across can be incredible, but because he hasn't expanded, I'm just going to keep my zealots at home. That's going to be my way of doing it. I'm going to make it the oracles, which is probably a good idea to actually not be supply blocked when you do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. And I'm also going to move out to take a third base, which sounds crazy, but remember that's usually part of it. Alright, no need to take damage to the queen. And, okay. I'm gonna recall that. I don't know how that tabbed out just then. Apparently it was my right windows button. Tears that out of the keyboard. No worries. We saw plenty of zerglings that were built, which is, I guess, good enough. And these guys are gonna take up station on the third. Build another oracle. You have not enough minerals. And so it can go there as well. We embrace the glory of battle. An ARD. I'm just told positioning because there's no spore crawler. Dimensional strings attuned. The threads of fate. This oracle's gonna go out the middle to see if he's coming at me straight on. Put another pile on there. You seek guidance? And we're going to go in and see if we can kill some stuff on the third. Just do it to attack three drones and then run away. Gets one of them into a spore trick. Well done. And all right, we can now get the robo up. The Templar march. It shall be done. Building lots of probes. You seek guidance. Harmonized. And Let just doing some nice stasis strap pressure. We can go after the probe. That's all right. We can get the twilight and the forge. Okay, and then this guy can maybe kill some gas workers or something. Oh, I clicked on the queen apparently there. I could have sworn I didn't, but you know, I'm pretty bad at Starcraft, so it is what it is. These drones apparently just miss rallied. Now, obviously this has been a bit of a mess, but it is for both of us. So as long as I stick to my rules, which is let's go to eight gateways. Let's make it 10 actually this time. Then that'll be fine. Just a few more probes here. We interpret. Can do a stasis trap one more time. Can go plus one, charge, the and play archives. Of course, get some extra pylons. I'm ready to teach. Okay. We meet our fate. Not enough. <laughs> See if I can maybe. There's no spore crawler up here. We can hold position out of range of the spore crawler. Just kill the gas drones, and that's really well done. And we can do a stasis trap over there as well. 
Uh, we're just getting ready for our big push now. That warpism, we're going to boost that. Now obviously this push isn't hitting nearly as crisply as we want it to. But... What we're going to do is we'll move out to take a fourth base, because I've got extra minerals, potentially. Just waiting for that warp prism, of course. That really is what allows us to push. The lag is pretty vicious today, guys, so I apologize for that. Using a different internet connection today, but I think this should just be a win here. Hydras and Lings, we've got upgrades, and we've got a really big army. Can grab about five or six of those probes as well. Okay, so he's making a lot of Banes, of course. Now notice, if he's making Banes, one of the best things you can do is split your Zealots up. So, he's now got to attack in many different areas, and so we can pull the Zealots back where it's hard for him to find the big surface area on the Zealots that he wants, right? So notice now, he does get some good hits, but it's nowhere near what it could have been. And kind of try to make sure he doesn't get a good arc with his hydras shooting the immortal archon and just warp in more zealots and archons so those guys i can rank them forward remember you can't a move those units because while they're warping in they don't have an attack so gg well played all right so a very cool disruptive build for my opponent <clears throat> I think a lot of people like to just pull probes to deal with the hatchery and that might be the best way to do it to be honest um but i think blocking his expansions was really worth it because it just slowed down what he was doing he felt forced to build a roach horn which he never was able to use there so when in doubt opponent's doing something weird to you on one base could be a crazy cheese we don't know always what do we do second pylon second gateway cyber core chrono two zealots out and that is going to be a huge part of any cheese defense every single time. It just makes such a big difference, such a big difference. If you just have that set piece there, it's usually going to be pretty good. And like I said, if I pull like six, seven probes straight away, I can basically kill the hatchery very quickly, um, even before it finishes. It'd be crazy to let it finish. But in this case, I was like, you know what? Let's just do this really safe way of doing it. Just go back to the, the set kind of play that we do against cheesy stuff so if you're not sure how to read it eh we'll just do it this way to make sure we're safe it does delay our nexus a lot though because if this finishes that's huge now if we let a queen get out and put a creep tumor down like here it, we'd never get this expansion up so i had to kill this before the queen was out which is why the second zealot's very important so <clears throat> the thing is at this point i realized look this is going to be up for ages i need to get on my second gas i need to get my stargate building and i should have built my stargate right here 2 minutes 35. I was a little distracted, and I think I even queued up a Stalker before it. <clears throat> so we could have got it even before the Stalker, to be real. Would have been really nice. So my Stargate was actually very delayed. I could have probably got it even earlier. We could have got it like 210, right? Yeah, if I didn't queue that Stalker, I would have 125 gas right now. So I think if you realize that the hatchery is going to finish, standard default rule, Go straight for the Stargate. So second gas and Stargate immediately, immediately versus that. Because you kind of know, hey, this thing's gonna finish. I'm not gonna be able to get my hatchery. You could argue that they might cancel, build an Evo chamber and not be going for such a big investment and such a long block. But uh, in this case, we went for kind of a, hey, you block me, I'll block you sort of play. And from then on, Void Rays, Harass with Mass Phoenix. Just go back to whatever your normal game plan is, which you got to see. I, I did my exact normal plan. I made two oracles to harass, as well as two adepts. Obviously, normally I build the adepts out of one gateway, and then I just followed the exact normal order of the build. What's the advantage for a Zerg building a proxy in the Protoss Natural? 
he's just delaying my expansion. Now, he could have committed to building roaches out of here, pumping out zerglings and queens from the inside of your wall while busting the front with zerglings rallied across as well, right? If so if you don't actually commit to killing that quick enough, he can actually use it to produce army units. But because I, I shut it down quickly enough, my opponent didn't have that option and is forced to go for the economic play behind it and say, hey, I can get up to three bases and you're still on one base for a really long time. So it's just a way of uh, trying to mess him up. Now, his overlord maybe could have got to the pillar, the one that popped out there, but he wasn't able to and our stalker got the kill, which was huge. Yeah. So the Adepts didn't really do anything, guys, but notice I cancelled that shade. We did tab out at that point and immediately just recalled. Now you might think of this as a failed Adept pressure. I just want to remind you guys, this was an incredibly successful Adept pressure. Because just by showing them moving across the map, my opponent seeing that, my opponent's gone and built nine speed Zerglings and a really early Link speed, which have no use. And I didn't even lose my Adepts, so they're going to still just be used to secure my third base now. So my opponent, their economy sucks. Notice how they're still, they're down on workers pretty massively already. And I'm like, dude, I can just take a third straight away. Like, you know, yes, my natural's late, but I'll get a third up quicker. So I'll still hit my probes at a pretty good timing. Now that Zealot does get surrounded. We lose a probe or two as well. You know, good play from my opponent. Does some nice play. And you see here, we do what we call the safety shade. It's where you shade to a safe area so that you feel confident to kind of chase Zerglings out, where obviously they could surround and kill you, but you know that even if they surround you, they'll get a bit of damage and then you'll teleport back to the choke point. So safety shade's a nice way to kind of zone out Zerg units without being as risky. Hey, what's up, Askers? Uh, if you hit exclamation mark B to GM doc, you can, you can see we're playing Stargate. I'm not playing Mass Air, because Mass Air is fucking lame and it's for baboons. Um, <laughs> in general, um, yeah. Like, it's not really something something anyone does except Protoss against Zerg every now and then, or we like really turtly styles. But we're doing a lot of a lot of fun stuff. Um, I mean, I guess I play like Mass Muta Corruptor sometimes, right? If the Protoss is going air, I'll play Mass Mass Zerg at a counter their air, right? Trap does it every game. Yeah, it's not very fun though, is it? There's a reason why nobody likes watching Protoss vs Zerg in the last year. <laughs> As air, air units just you know it's, it's not the most exciting stuff opening stargate and using it to get into ground is really really fun and hybrid styles are fun no robo glaive adept into double robo legoland you made diamond three. Oh, it's a good build dude just a three gate glaive adept pressure where you just shade across the map and then you've got a third into double robo behind it oh it's a good build legoland Oh wait, you said no glaive. Oh, no glaive adept into double robo. Oh wow, that sounds funky. I don't even know what that build is. Maybe it was the student special build and I just helped them with it. Sounds fun. All right guys, we got ourselves another Protoss versus Zerg. Good luck, have fun. You're not a planet. We just fucking slayed it. We've killed his confidence before the game even starts. I don't know if this guy actually has a friend called Dog and he thinks it's him, but it'd be funny if it was. I'm just, uh, this is the random distraction banter at the start, guys. So now he's pretty convinced I'm cheesing him when I'm not. This is pretty sick. That's how you do it. All right, guys. So um, first things first, remember to pull one worker off minerals onto gas. So notice I queued him so that he would, I just went shift right click. So that meant he was already going to finish returning, which he was already doing. And then, um, and then he was going to go onto the gas. That way we don't waste the five minerals. Havar hit the door. Someone help me out. You have not enough minerals. What language is this? <laughs> I 
<laughs> I think that's the right language, right? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> C. <laughs> he said, what is your name? Nice. <laughs> Nay. <laughs> he says, you're not Jerry, right? Oh my god. Alright guys, let's chrono and adept across the map. And we go straight for Stargate. Notice I even got that probe to go in from the inside. And then we want to queue up Warpgate and the second Adept. If you've been really good with your gas mining, you should be able to do both at the same time. And awesome, we are able to. All right, guys. So we got two Adepts coming across now. The second one, because I only see one Ling. Let's try and kill this Ling, by the way. I feel like there might be another Zergling about to run in. Glory to the Daemon. Okay, I'm trying to scout both third locations at once. Give us your command. And we've got an Oracle on the way. We'll try and chrono that, but we don't quite have the energy. After you build a Stargate, build another pylon. And we can get another Adept, and then that second gateway. Oh, this guy speaks good. So is this Swedish guys or what? Yes, executor. Higgelig, a more dog. Let none detain. We serve. Okay, so we're gonna try and shade in. It shall be done. And we're just gonna see if we can kill some drones. Good surround. He didn't let me get to the choke point. So good defense by him. We're gonna chrono the second oracle. Got one oracle going to the main. Next one will come down the here. Shall persevere. What do we do after that, guys? You guys know. If you lose your um, adepts, you're meant to keep the oracle at the third base, remember? Did I turn the laser off? I did not. Okay. And then we go double gas into Robo. Get an extra pylon, get an extra pylon. The threads okay. Of Keep building probes. Awesome. Can build a shield battery. Why not? How can I... Our window is short. Let us begin. Okay. An Send this guy in first. An Just kill one. And then we bring... Oop. Wrong hotkey. So we've got hotkey two, hotkey three. And... There's two queens and a spore, so we can't fight there, but we can do a bit of hold position. So there we go. Two more drones. And then we can run away. We turn that laser off. And we see double Evo, so it might be like Mass Ling or something. I don't really know. Anyways, we go home from there. We put guys on gas. We start an observer and then a mortal. We can queue up both at the same time. Grab three of these, rally to the third. We get the twilight, the forge. One, two, three, four. Let's also build a phoenix to kill this guy. <laughs> and we can go number two, number three, number two, number three. They both don't have energy. From this point, we just want to do stasis trap pressure, remember. How many gateways did I build there, guys? So we've got six gateways. One, two. I'll make nine gateways. Did we get a twilight as well? We did. So we want to make forge, twilight that. We have four sentries coming up, which would be cool. And we only need a handful more probes to saturate that base, right? Yep. All right. Robo needs to be hotkeyed. Chrono and another immortal. And then this one can go maybe like stasis trap there. And same time stasis trap there. And then we just want to monitor to make sure they're not drifting into like three queens or something crazy. I don't know if that's even in range. It's not. <laughs> I think the other one went off, though. It is what it is, guys. Alright. Oh, I forgot to build my Templar Archives. So we just make Zealots for now. Um, 
Make a few more Zet pylons as well. A few more pylons just to make sure we don't get supply blocked. And oh, Hydras, look at that. And our Phoenix is just going around looking for stuff. Uh, this one's going to go for a bit of a closer stasis trap this time. And yeah, we're going to stasis trap there as well. So you can see this time, these will actually go off. And we're going to get a freeze, get a freeze. And that's way more effective. Now, I think I kind of want to wait for one more Immortal here. Because I only have enough gas for a single Archon right now, which feels like not enough. So... Oh, my. So try to use your Force Fields and Guardian Shield. So notice I moved forward so that the sentries could actually get in range, otherwise my other units would have blocked me. And we're going to make... High Templar, Zealots, break the force fields. And there we go. Okay. Immortal comes, joins the army. Prism comes over as well. And because he's got no defense, the Zealots are faster than his army, we can chase into his production and do it like that. So we didn't get a lot of our, uh, High Templar that game, but we had a really good Zealot count. We had plus one, and you could just see the power of going to such a simple game plan. It's so damn effective. Um, the Adepts didn't really do that much at all, but they distracted, maybe got supply blocked afterwards. And then remember, we remembered that really important rule, which actually lost us a PBZ in the first section of this. I think it was against a GM player, but still, which is if you lose those two Adepts straight away, they're going to counterattack you with Zerglings. So you need to send your first Oracle just to sit at your third and secure it until you get the Nexus, the Pylon, and an Adept or two in the choke point, and then you can send the Oracle across the map. So you got a very early Spore Crawler in the main, so it's not a bad thing that I kept my Oracle at home because he actually had a Spore up very early. Now this Spore, unfortunately, Finn was poorly placed. It should be on this side because this is the outer edge where the oracles will come from. Likewise, this spore is pretty well placed. It could be one space to the right. Technically, if you do too far to the side, obviously the oracle can come around and hit the other side. But you see this spore crawler wasn't really covering it as much as it could have. We've got a little bit of damage done with our oracles, nothing crazy, but it's just such a straightforward game plan, right? You have an adept in between the pylon. If you want to build a battery, you do so. You go robo, so it's nexus, then robo in third and fourth gas, then twilight forge, five six more gateways um chrono out observer then immortal immortal you just keep queuing stasis traps after your first laser run buys um because they're so easy to do and even if and, and notice i'm not microing it whenever i do it right because we're going to do one soon i always queue it up right so let's look at my camera and i just want you guys to watch that one more time so notice i've queued it in already and i'm just double tapping my control groups to see if i need to cancel the order and pull either of them back is it efficient to use oracles to kill creep instead of the stasis after the initial harass? Ah, oh, it's up to you. It's, it's how much you, you've favored clearing creep. To me, that's way more micro-intensive, way more APM heavy. It's going to be easier to get killed by queens. Uh, this is so much easier to do. And this actually directly affects the economy. Whereas if you clear creep, I mean, it clears up an area for your push, which is nice, but I figure I'm probably going to be diving pretty deep on creep anyway. So... I don't really prioritize killing creep shoomers. To me, it feels like, hey, that, that can definitely be useful, especially if I'm playing a longer macro game. But it's just never been a priority for me. If I'm playing a longer macro game, I'll probably still do some sort of move out with my first few immortals. And the, I'll just use them with the observer to like go around and kill some creep shoomers and just be ready to force field and recall out if you have to. Yeah. Pluto has left the solar system. <laughs> My opponent played a pretty good game. Um, they were trying to play Hydra Bane with double melee upgrades though, which doesn't really make too much sense in my opinion. So um, notice how they're on 67 drones, but they're going for an attack. Now, this is actually really good macro for my opponent. To have 67 drones and already have 15 Hydras, 28 Zerglings out, I'm kind of floored that this player is Masters 3. I think what we can definitely read into it though is this attack makes no sense, right? And I think it's because they're just playing completely blind. Like, if they scout, scouted, it would be so obvious for them to go, hey, I'm in a good position. The, the Zerg, like, where, where, where the Zerg, make a bay in the nest, go home. And also, you shouldn't be making carapace. It should absolutely be range upgrades, and you should be getting the other Hydralisk upgrade as well. But um, if you just get Banelings to deal with the Zealots, you know, uh, 
you're in a good position. You're also already up seven probes and you're about to go up another seven. So you're about to go up 15 workers. So there's no pressure to attack unless you think the Protoss is taking gases, taking double forge, that sort of stuff. But remember, my opponent... Actually, he did scout. Remember, he has overlord speed. Oh, yeah, he has overlord speed. Huh. What would be really cool is if he threatened with this attack while dropping eight Zerglings in here and eight Zerglings in the main. Because you've already made overlord speed, so it's basically free. Oh. He saw two oracles and a phoenix. He assumed more air. There's no reason to assume more air. Two oracles and a phoenix is almost always going to be a ground transition. Yeah. They assumed void rays into carriers, probably. Just a pretty big leap after seeing just two oracles. Yeah, if you haven't seen a single void ray, I mean, you need to really see at least two void rays and multiple stargates to really know that's the case. But yeah, this was, I mean, here he could have just ran away. If he just ran away upon seeing that army, I think he's in actually a position where he could definitely hold my push. Because the trick is that like, you just don't want to be running into a guardian shield, getting your hydras force fielded, fighting zealot shield battery with uh, Archon, with Zerglings. Zerglings are worthless units in this situation. You want to have enough Hydras to basically destroy the Sentry Immortal Archon by in a big arc, and you want Banelings to stop the Zealots from wrecking your Hydras, and that's about it. But uh, he was in a great position economically, and spread creep like a beast, but maybe just didn't really have any scouting or strategic adjustment to the situation. Clearly a very strong player though, because dealt with a fair bit of harassment very well, and uh, as we can see, okay, is, is almost Grandmaster, so we can see he's a Masters 1 player. So that does make sense. I was like, how does he have so much stuff? My opponent's clearly pretty damn good at StarCraft. Like, what? <laughs> I was like, how is he so good? <laughs> I was like, this isn't Masters 3, but we are getting to the top end of Masters 3. So we're playing a bigger range of people. So I hope some of you Americans are very early risers if you want to watch it. We're going to do a free-for-all to see who gets first draft picks. And then we're going to be doing a draft. I'm going to be staying up very late at night for this uh, cast of Civil War match. So I'm going to be super loose when we get to it, guys. I'm just going to be like shit talking everybody. I'm going to be like, you fucking suck, dude. Fucking stay up till five in the morning to draft these tickets. We'll see what happens. Um, your internet's so good you feel like an oil rich Saudi. Noise. Yeah, it's just the, 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 the literal uh, power, like the literal thing got unplugged while they were, they were doing it. So my internet's actually been really legit for the last, what, four months, five months, something like that now. It's really weird. What are we playing? All right, we're going to go high ground pylon. Now, you shouldn't really go high ground pylon, guys, ever against Zerg, because even if you're playing random, you don't need to, but I just wasn't paying attention. So we're just going to make the most of this, and uh, we'll have to expand down there with our second pylon and second uh, um, gateway and that sort of stuff anyway. So that, that'll work out as long as you don't freak out too much over it and you just plan ahead make sure your second pylon goes down on the low ground ahead of time um then usually that's okay okay all right chronoing these probes let's make sure we get our camera location set up we're doing the same style lots of protos versus oak today which is really interesting <clears throat> three in a row good chance for some repetitions so let's see if we can pull the build off, even from a messy situation, which is essentially what we put ourselves in right now. So we've got control group one, and okay, well, we can do a little bit of probe harass. We don't want to do too much, because that can be very distracting. We just put that down. Then we go cybercore and then pylon, okay? So notice we pause on 20 supply. Cybercore here. Cool thing about this is we have a backup wall off if we get all in. We build one more probe. And we go second gas. And this guy can mine that. And we can get that pylon here for the wall off. Okay. And there we go. Awesome. So notice we don't see a lot of lava saved up or anything like that, which is good to know. We're going to check what's going on out there. We're going to chrono boost and adapt, so we shift rally that to make sure it doesn't pop down here and have to run extra distance to get around. We go to Stargate. And I'm just going to even out that scouting. We see a nice quick third base. We just go there and then home. We can get warp gate and a second adapt. Glory to the and we don't need that there, so let's rally to the natural now. Awesome. 
We serve with pride. So notice you try to move and shoot when you're fighting against Zerglings like that. Um, just to make sure they don't get past you. The firstborn shall Alright, so we've got the Stargate. Let's get second gate. And you know what, guys? Should we get a third gateway as well, just to wall off? Maybe. We're not going to harass with those guys straight away, because there's too much going on. I think the Oracle's more important, of course, than the wall off. But we will get a third gateway down, so slight variation in the build order. Actually, we can put a pylon to wall off. There we go. It's still a wall off. Okay, so we see quite a lot of Zerglings, guys. If you see a lot of Zerglings like that, there's just no need to actually commit to the fight. So all we're going to do is we're going to shade home. Okay. And we're going to hide off to the side because Ling Speed's probably finished at this point. So. Okay. Let's go down there. Let's try and get another pylon here. Yes, give us your command. And we can take that bird. Okay. Cool. Alright, so now we can go in with the Oracle, guys. Let's see if there's a spore finished. Maybe do some hold position again. Oh, check it out, guys. So we see a Baneling Nest. Okay, guys, looks like we do manage to defend. Ooh, let's make a Void Ray. Oh my god, that was hectic, wasn't it? <laughs> Always build extra pylons in these scenarios, guys, and uh, gonna make some extra gateways as well, just for a bit of safety. Keep making gases here. And we're just going to be ready to wall off further. So if he makes more guys, then, uh, then that'll be a thing. Okay, cool. So now, guys, what's next? Follow the build. Now, obviously, I can't get a third, but we can still go Forge, Robo Twilight. We're going up to, like, six gateways already, which was a safety. But now we can obviously do other stuff as well. You're kidding me, right? You don't actually think that's good? Surely not. There we go. Okay, we can use Prismatic Alignment to kill the Void Ray quicker. And then, what are we doing? Guys, I told the probe to attack the pylon, and then to shift move over there, okay? And then these guys can go there. The Void Ray can sit there. This guy can sit in the wall. That establishes us on this base count, okay? Now that's not the best pylon positioning, but that's alright. And now the oracle can go across the map, and we're just checking all of our basics, okay? Rally the robo observer and then immortals, plus one, thingamajig. Make some more gateways, and we're probing up that third ahead of time, okay? Check it out, guys. We've got a pretty good army now. The Oracle can go in, see if we can catch some drones transferring or just kill some drones or something like that. No drones on the third, which means our opponent is effectively dead. So notice we're just going to click some drones. Only one queen, not really a threat. Any drones popping out here? I'm going to kill some Zerglings. Nah, that's done. And now, guys, what do we do? Shift patrol. So that Oracle will see anything coming across the map, okay? You guys know we love to do that. I return to serve. This is going to be more pylons than I probably ever need. And we're just going to send this Void Ray around a little bit more to see what's up. And I'm also going to try and now spot the main. Now we're still building just a couple more probes, but we don't really need them. Because... If you've been harassed or rushed or cheesed, your main is going to mine out earlier than normal, right? In comparison to everything else happening. So 
A lot of people get confused by that. Like, what do you mean earlier than normal? Like, what? How's, how does that make sense? In comparison to where you are in the game, right? Because that's what you should be thinking about. Not, it's four minutes in the game. I should do this. Yeah, I'm at X supply. I should do this. You should always think about it in relation to where you actually are. Now, let's take a look. What is this? Okay, this is interesting. Okay. Wow. So this appears to be... An... Okay, just build some more pylons. Um, a Void Ray Ling... A Queen Ling Bane push. They can't transfuse off creep. So anytime we catch them off creep, we should probably fight it. We're just making more guys. Now, what would be... Okay, so I'm just going to fight now, guys. Just so that we're... Kind of watching what goes on. Okay. So what do we do? We move them somewhere so they're a mega clump? Um, he doesn't have enough banelings, I think, for my zealots to care. I only see two banelings, which can't even kill one zealot. I don't think I really care too much about that. And Archons just beat all these units really, really well. Okay, so we can just leave like a Stalker in the main, I guess. And we should be able to just move out now. We're going to kill uh, this gateway and then this gateway. Oh, screw it. We'll use the Prism. I don't want to kill two gateways. You normally don't want to have to recall these guys specifically because of this, guys, but it is what it is. Um, you don't have an accessibility entrance on your base. Let's just say Archons are very American. Let's put it that way. Oh, we need a ramp. We need a ramp. Um, obviously, accessibility is good, just in case anyone doesn't get the sarcasm there, but... Let's just say when you're in a life or death military situation fighting off thugs, maybe not your highest priority. Well done, mate. Doesn't matter because we can instantly resaturate. Dude, why are you still coming to me? I got this, bro. I will go to you! Cool. So there's a cute little Ling Bane attack. Um, the problem with this sort of build is that oracles kick the shit out of everything. Now, I do think we kind of baited my opponent into this inadvertently by having such a shit wall off, right? He's looking at this and he just can't resist. He's like, oh, I can fucking bust that natural. But remember, I can always warp in on the high ground, a single unit, and run my probes to the main. And all he's doing is, yes, he depowers the Stargate, but then I've still got flying units out and I've still got a gateway and a, a ramp that he's got to bust through. So obviously we adapted here to me putting the pylon in the wrong spot. Um, so what do we do? We left the pipe probe down here to make sure we got the pylon down, even though we lost a bit of mining for it. At this point, I was like, yeah, well, I didn't really get a chance to confirm that he was droning. So this is probably the biggest crime that I did this game, guys, is not properly scouting with my first adept. Your first adept should always chrono twice across the map, right? So I should have chronoed a second time here. And then the third scout, chrono, uh, the third shade, sorry, not chrono, I'm calling shade chrono. The third shade should be to check the work account. But I didn't do it because I was like, oh calculating, hey, how should I get my wall off up? Do I need a, oh, I think I need a third gateway before I normally would. You know, all this sort of stuff was going on in my head. And then I was like, wait, no, just build the Oracle. You normally build a pylon after the Oracle anyway. And actually a pylon does seal the wall there. Of course, a pylon's a weak spot in a wall, but it is how it works. So uh, that's my clan, says Demi. What's up? Yeah, you're in a cheese clan. Um, I like the Super Saiyans guys. They're pretty nice. They're pretty cool generally, but uh, they, they are all cheeses. Let's be real. Um, it's, it's the... It's the uh, shared knowledge of that clan. So anyways, guys, like I said, that adept should have shaded in. And if we shaded in with our first adept, we would have seen, hey, why are there so few drones here? That would have been a big tell. And then if we could have got a shade in towards the main, we could have tried to see, are there drones popping out or zerglings popping out? That's a big tell of aggression. And if you can see that they're still mining gas, that's big. If you see the bailing nest, that's huge. So me not doing that scout meant I didn't realize what was happening. I saw some Zerglings, but I didn't see all of them there. And my opponents made a huge mistake by gathering all the Zerglings at the front. They really should be looking to hide the Zergling numbers. So in this sort of scenario, they should be sending just 10 or 12 Zerglings to surround the Adepts. And the other ones should already be up here. They should have been queued to move here and then here. And then they could already be morphing Banelings in location, getting ready. 
So then as these other 20 lings rally across the map, the 12 lings clean this up. You've already got like eight bane lings morphed. And then my opponent could have busted me right on 415 or something like that. And even with the Oracle still popping right then, he's going to blow up. He's going to get in here way faster and quicker. But you can see that these banelings weren't done nearly as fast. And I see that baneling nest in the main. And this was my first trigger. So what was my response, guys? Same thing. If I know I'm being Ravager Ling, or, uh, Ling flooded, Ravager all in, baneling all in, anything like that. If I even have an inkling of that, first thing I do is wall off. Now, technically, you should probably do a cyber core there. And normally, that's all I need to do. The reason this wasn't enough is obviously, I forgot to take into account, there's a fucking pile on there, buddy. So I should have also, and I've got the money for it, quickly gone gateway, gateway as well. There still could have blown up this pylon, then this pylon. That's still 10 banelings to get through that. So if I was quicker to get extra buildings, a few more banelings would have had to blow up on the buildings. As it was, it looks like he blew them all up anyway. Which I don't think he needed to. Because if he had one or two more banelings getting the probes, that would have been a problem. But notice I immediately fell back to the backup wall on the high ground. And I shaded these adapts back from the third. I already had my third base cancelled, but we didn't lose any probes, and then I'm trying to wall off. Now, he keeps stopping me from walling off, so very good play by my opponent here, but he's lost all of his Zergling, so we're okay. Yeah. GGG. What about making a making Q sentry and doing an immortal sentry follow-up? I'm not sure what you mean there, Chris. Assassin, thanks for the 19 month resub. What's up? Thank you so much for the love, everybody. How are we doing? Save over the raid before that. Appreciate the love, everybody. Bob Deslayer with the 8 month resub before as well. Draft's happening at almost Aussie midnight, Colossopher. It's going to be about 13 hours from now. My dude. About 13 hours just over that, yeah. Alright. So, notice how we always navigate back to our normal game plan. There are really good intuitive strategies that you guys can do um you know to 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 adapt to different scenarios but uh in general you want to make sure you map those out in detail and what we do is essentially we go to the exact same push that i normally do right it hits maybe a bit later but my opponent is obviously so far behind on workers and we know that's a strong push and that's what we do what about doing a sentry immortal foot push i guess that's part of my question chris is i i did a sentry immortal follow-up i I mean, I didn't have a crazy number of sentries, but I literally was making sentries and immortals, so... I, I've had a few questions from different people today where right after a game, they've been saying, hey, what, what if you do this thing? And I'm like, that's just what I did. So I guess I'm a little confused. Do you mean like a two base, like really quick sentry and model push with like no twilight, no forge? Maybe that's what you mean. Um, in, in that case, yeah, you could do that. The, the, the reason why a, a very quick timing attack's not really working um, as the most accessible option is I've gone Stargate first. If I've gone Robo first and I've defended with like an Immortal and a Warp Prism, making sentries, making one more Immortal, making three more gateways and going for a counter push, immediately there. But a Void Ray and an Oracle add almost nothing to a frontal ground all in. So yeah. Notice in the face of this push guys, I actually probably could have just jumped on him there and killed his Queens off creep. I could have ran forward and force fielded them and this would have been game over. That would have probably been the best way to shut this down because remember they can't transfuse off creep. But um, generally speaking, Archons are just going to destroy Ling Bane and, uh, and you'll be good. Why no batteries at my third? Because there was no danger of me dying to literally anything in this game. I have a Void Ray. Uh, I, I have, I've shut down his first push really hard without pro losses. I'm way ahead. So investing in defensive tech when you're miles ahead and preparing for your own attack makes no sense. If you could... If, if an Archon could pick a shield battery up, put it on its shoulders, and bring it to your push to your opponent's base, it would make a lot of sense. But we're going for a timing attack. We want our timing attack to be as strong as possible. So that shield battery would be one less sell it, right? Or even more than that, because it's if we're building it even earlier, that's slowing down maybe our gateways or something getting up in our production. So there's no, there's no need for us to be building a shield battery on a third base if we feel confident, right? Queens can't transfuse off creep since the last patch, snakey boy. Uh -huh. at five minutes his only option was muta all in he could have gone for another wave of ling bane all in waited for my void ray and oracle to move out move out and just secretly bank up units and not let them get spotted just have zergling spotters to make sure he doesn't show that he's rallying more ling bane and um and basically i think if he went full baboon my opponent's best option in that game was literally to just keep making ling bane but hiding it hiding it and hope that i move my army out to defend my third base and, and retake my third 
and then come in with like such a delayed surprising all in and hope that I shit the bed. Um, Muters is an option. It's not a great one. I think, I think the problem is he's never going to get to Muters in time unless he had very quick tech. I think, um, I think it's an option that can get you back in the game for sure. But I think one of the issues is, is I am going for a pretty crisp push anyway. So what I would, I would advise is that actually just going to the same work account as me, like 55, 60 workers and doing nothing but making Roach Ravager, his best bet was probably a defensive all in. Oh, you know what, guys? This is a Terran player. I don't know why I thought I was playing a, a, a Zerg and a, and a Protoss <laughs> for a moment there. I was like, hey, this is Zerg. I'm like, wait, no, it's Protoss. And then I was like, wait a second. So we're playing someone called Micro Jackson, a big Beyond fan. They're in Clan Splits, which is awesome. I kind of want to make Disruptors versus them, but we're not. And you know what? Actually, we are. Guys, this might be our promotion game. So that's actually really useful because I've been really wanting to show the gas transition off of this Zealot Stalker style. So I specifically said in Masters 3, before I move higher, I really want to do that because in Masters 2, I'm going to be doing Phoenix Colossus PVT. So this is going to be potentially the last the last point where I'm doing this build, this, this second and third gateway plus forge build. Um, so this is kind of, yeah, should, should take that definitely, obviously if they do a two base all in, we're not going to get there, but if we can get there guys, that'll be really fun. Um, see if we can get down to that point. Okay. So what do you do guys always? Look, he's bringing in a CV, only one gas. So very standard play. Then we go to the cyber core. And we want to block his expansion, right? At about a minute 40. And we did take some damage unnecessarily here, guys. That's okay. We're still going to delay it by at least just a couple seconds. Oof. Looks like we might just barely get home. Unless the other SCV comes from this side. But look, now we've regenerated shields. So as long as we click on our natural, whew, we'll be fine. Now, I am a little late on that pylon and second gas doing that micro, guys. But gas... One gas into expand. I mean, this is a big sign of an expansion. And check Cybercore finishes. Pylon's only a second behind, so not too bad there. And remember, this is not a Phoenix build, so we go straight for warp gear. Okay. Now he could be going um, Reaper. So what we're going to do is we're going to mine those five minerals and then hide there. So if a Reaper comes in, he's going to think there's no workers on the natural, even though there is. Oh. Glory to the Daylock. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people have noticed, um... Yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of people willing to trade that Reaper, I've noticed. At pro level and higher level, people like to really keep it alive. They're like, I'll never lose this Reaper, man. But, uh, it's interesting. Alright, so we're gonna do some chronos on the probes. The Adept will go across, try and see what's at the front. Okay, so we don't need to look at him for a little bit while he goes across, because we're sending him to a non-dangerous area out here. And chrono blink. Now obviously... Oh, shit. Okay, so he's going for the Marauder pressure, guys. So we just need to make us... Now, what, what could be really cool is you can counter-attack across this, against this, right? So it's a little dangerous, so... I I think I kind of just want to recall, but no, I don't have the... I have met the enemy. Oh, shit. Okay, I guess we are going to trade him off there. Let's get that second gateway and forge, because it's already miles late. And... Oh, he just sat at home with his units. Okay, well, we'll build a shield battery. Normally you build a shield battery, because I didn't have a pylon in the natural. We can see that's one of the weaknesses of doing this uh, second pylon in the main base, right? So second pylon in the natural, much more solid versus that, but it is what it is. Okay, guys, so we're still probing up. We're going to try and move down there to take a third base, and obviously that could get cancelled by Marauders. But now that the shield battery is almost up, I feel confident kind of moving out with my Stalkers in a moment. There we go. Still building probes, making sure those are nicely queued up. We've got plus one, we'll start up. But I want to get my third Nexus first, because we're already a little bit delayed after losing a probe at the start, and that probe kind of being a bit delayed, that sort of stuff. So now we can get the plus one. And the other thing that I'm really curious about is, is he doing a Widow Mine drop? Well, the thing is, guys, if they open Marauders, any sort of Widow Mine drop, Banshee, 
any play like that is going to be massively, massively, massively delayed, okay? So I'm totally okay in my mind to just go across the map with these stalkers. The only trick I want to do is make sure I attack across the map from both sides at once. So that if he moves out and I come in from the other side, I'm aware of the fact that that's happened and I'm not suddenly blindsided. And we're also going to go up to about eight stalkers, okay? Um, we're going to build a pylon there as well. Let's build a pylon behind that mineral line. Keep probing. And we'll go... Was this eight stalkers? Yeah, about eight stalkers. This is going to be a really good army for just picking off bio at the front. Behind this, what do we do? We want to go charge. We'll queue armor in a little bit, but not just yet. Let's get one more pylon for production space here in the main. And we'll do a big gateway explosion shortly. Queue up a few more probes. And let's go in. Let's see what we can kill. Oh, no bunker. That's always nice. So, what do we do, guys? We just picked off a Marauder by focus firing it. He's coming for me, though. We've got to be careful here. Careful, mate. Okay, let's get... Can we make a sentry at home? I mean, these guys are going to keep trying to pick off. Oh, careful. Okay, so there's two Marauders we've almost killed, but not quite. Okay, this is not looking great, guys. Oh my god! Pull back, pull back, pull back. Ooh, a little too slow on our gateways, aren't we, guys? And our charge. Okay, let's go. Jesus. This is seven minutes already? Why do I have no units? I think I must have misrallied something. Seven minutes? And a charge only just kicked in at seven minutes. Like, that's a big sign of me screwing up really bad, guys. This guy's done a pretty solid build, and I've done a big doo-doo. And, wait, I didn't battery overcharge, did I? Ooh, what is going on today, Piggy? Okay, he did stim there. So he's stimming a bit too much, which is good for me, of course. Um, oh, he's going to go in the main. Okay. Okay, interesting. Let's try and get a fourth base as well, maybe. Okay. Okay, let's try and send the stalkers out, and then we can try and send... Maybe 10 zealots as a run by? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's very trigger happy on his stims. So that's definitely very good for me. Alright, I think we can take him. Maybe? Maybe not. Guardian Shield's good, it's not that good, guys. He's played really well, really nice game for my opponent. And uh, just really sick 5 racks macro here, really well played. This is awesome. This will be a really good learning replay to look at how the build-up really matters. Uh, Zealot's doing some nice damage, but really good stutter step, and he's just got that big ball of bio that we just can't do anything about at this point. GG, well played. Really impressive. He has a third base up as well. Let's go back and take a look at that from start to finish, because I guarantee you there are massive mistakes going on. He's following the, the Bronze to GM pig build. <laughs> no, he's not. He did a Marauder opening. Um, anyway, so first things first, guys. Doesn't matter how high level you are, always check the basics. So first things first, my pylon's really late here. That pylon should be going down smack bang on 17 seconds right now. But what happened? Reading Twitch chat at the start of the game. So this is a good lesson you guys can take. Uh, you kid won't shut the fuck up. Kick it out of the room. you would be like, wife, take care of the kid. Husband, take care of the kid. I need to get my fucking ladder games in. Take Jimmy out of here. Um, same with the cat. If the cat keeps climbing the keyboard. 
get that shit out of the room. Mm-hmm. Remove distractions. That's that's essentially what that is. Um, so that's a good rule. Uh, pay attention to the load screen. Actually read some stuff. Let's check what the delay was about. Three seconds, I think. Four seconds. So that's four seconds on pylon, four seconds on the gateway, four seconds on the adept. And, and that's four seconds of pro production, right? Little mistakes early make big impacts because check it out. We should be building a probe right now, but we can't. So we lose maybe two, three seconds for production. That's not the end of the world in of itself, but it's a small thing that builds the, the shit house that we're going to have to live in. These probes didn't get doubled up. Okay, yes, they did. Good job. All right. Now, I should queue straight to 20 probes, but I'm not doing that. That shows that I'm not planning ahead. Yeah, we even, we even missed a second of probe production there. Why would we not? Every game, you know you're going to go to 20 supply. You've got nothing else to spend your money on. We should have done it. Why haven't we rallied this nexus to the natural yet? So what we're seeing here is a pattern of not being properly focused on my build, planning ahead, lining up all the pieces ahead of time. It hasn't had catastrophic effects just yet, but we can already see the kind of telltale disorganization, okay? Probe comes in. Now this probe as well, I should have just queued it to go there, 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 so that it had more hit points on it, okay? That would have been big. Get the nexus down, pretty much right on time, that's fine. Cybercore with a different probe, right on time, and then we should resume probing. But we don't. Why are we not resuming probing, guys? Because I'm like, oh, let's micro my probe. We're meant to be building a probe, 21 gas, another probe, 22 second pylon. So on top of that opening, we've already made a few mistakes here. Now, yesterday we were casting special versus, was it max packs? And he was four seconds late on a Reaper in one of his games with the Proxy Reaper. And he lost that game three minutes in when the Reaper died and then he got counterattacked and he had no units at home. And it was a reminder that even the best players can make silly mistakes like that. And I guarantee you, he immediately went back and went, this is how it happened. This is the system I should have done instead. Commit that to memory. Repeat that in my head over and over. Exactly how I'll do that to make sure that never happens again. So you can see we're basically a probe short at this point. I should already be rallied to the natural. Potentially even chronoing probes more here would be really nice. And uh, I let this Reaper get a kill as well. While I'm microing against that, not only do I let it get a kill, which was unnecessary, I could have popped it back in the gas to at least keep it alive a little longer. I didn't get two probe kills and binding time. And I'm not producing probes on my natural during it. So it doesn't seem like a lot. But I'm already about two probes that got killed plus one and a half probes. I'm about two, three and a half probes behind from where I should be in this game. And my adapt could have already been across the map earlier, which would have made it easier to spot the uh, marauders and so on. Okay. Now, I assumed it was going to be three racks because that's normally what you do after the marauder opening. And this is obviously one of Beyond's favorite builds. The player's name is Micro Jackson. Do you reckon that's them? It's not a middle finger. He's just pointing at his own face. I do like the idea that this guy has taken a photo of himself, made a clan that only he's in, just so that he can have it. I like I like this guy already. This guy's legendary. Didn't poke with the Marauders at all, but he went crazy heavy on the Marauders, guys. So, Stalker Micro is actually really huge against this sort of play he did, and he actually did a super quick factory, because he goes for very slow shields. Ah, okay, so this is an interesting variant of the three one, of the three barracks as well, guys. So with this build, not only do they get a crazy Marauder count, which is very good versus Stalkers, they actually can't hit a super fast timing attack because it's just Marauders, right? So the thing is, if they were to attack with this at five minutes, I mean, I guess they could, but it's an army which doesn't have a lot of probe killing power. Um, it doesn't have as many, and the Marines that are there don't have shields. So it would just be a no plus one attack for a very long time either. But he actually gets his medevacs out pretty friggin' fast. Like, I was amazed at that. But it's because no gas is on the natural, right? And we didn't quite get that Marauder, so that was really good pullback micro. Really well done. Awesome. All right, let's go back a little bit here. So I did not adapt my build at all for it being a three racks, guys. At this point, I went on autopilot. I was kind of like, man, why is everything behind? I'm also building unnecessary pylons. Right now, I make a huge mistake. So what is this huge mistake, guys? I'm at 60 out of 70 supply, and I make two pylons. Now, you might be wondering, well, isn't that good? Because you're going to build some more stalkers right now. You know, you, you wanted to have eight stalkers on the front. You make another stalker, then you're going to start making sentries out it. Isn't it good to get more supply? The answer is fuck no, because we've got two pylons that are going to finish in 20 seconds in the form of this nexus. This is a huge mistake. To be building two pylons right now, I've already got 10 supply free. The nexus is there. 
And what is that pylon taking away from? It's taking away from charge starting, which I should already be starting, and my gateways. I should have immediately started charge in this game, and I should have been going bam, bam, bam. Zealot, get a sentry for the Guardian Shield, start making Zealots after these eight Stalkers. And this is always what you wanna do. You make a certain number of Stalkers, you say, this is my forward squad to pick off units and harass. And I should have got here earlier as well, because Blink's been done for a while. So I could have already been doing damage, letting my shields regen, picking off units, letting my shields regen that as well, okay? So, if I didn't build those pylons, we could then go gate, 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 start getting our five gateways up. And the thing is, if you're up against a three racks, do you want to go straight to eight gateways? No. So there's like a little rule we can make here, right? Which is really cool. Okay. Reaction versus three racks, okay? So eight stalkers, quite a high number. Send straight to enemy natural so you can pick off units as soon as blink is done and pick off units and blink away as they push you. Maybe bait out some stims, etc. Okay? So that's really important. But the other thing is immediately start charge after blink kicks in. rush to six gates okay basically as well so so basically it's like well i would say i'd say no non-stop warp-ins okay so immediate battery on third non-stop warp-ins because you still you still got to be careful against the early push right non-stop warp-ins uh one century then zealots after early commitment. Now, obviously you can go for a force field to a three racks. The problem is some maps have really wide open areas. Force fields can be super easy shutdown or they can screw up and they're a very gas heavy thing, which is different to our two gas style. So we go non-stop warpins. One sentry, then zealots. Um, okay. And then immediately start charge after blink kicks in. Add your gateways uh, ASAP and more steadily. I think something we can else say, right? Cut probes at two base at just five probes rallied to third base, which would be, what would that be guys? 38 plus five, that's like 43 probes. So if you cut at like, or not even cut, just deprioritize probes. What does that mean? Focus on these other things instead of non-stop probing. It's basically, it's okay to have gaps in your probe production, yeah? So that's just the general rule there. It's like the other things are more important, right? Add your gateways ASAP, add three gates ASAP. Definitely cut probes to get this a bit faster, okay? So if we look at this game, obviously I'm behind from where I should be, so the timings won't hold true, but if we go back a little bit, we can go, hey, it's four minutes 40, blink is almost done, let's move across the map. And we could probably do that from as early as 4.30. Now I wanted to be cautious and not do it too early, because if I move away from my shield battery, oh, thank you, Maha. Thanks for the Protoss B2GM. Maha! Thank you so much for the love, mate. Slap that bacon down in the chat. If I call you Daddy Pig, will you call me Pepper? Uh, sure, Pepper, Pepper Dobbs. No worries, you weirdo. Um, but yeah, if these stalkers move out, I know he's got concussive marauders. I don't want to get caught on the map. But let's say from 4.30, 4.40, we move across the map, we start harassing. And guys, we're already at 40 probes. So yeah, I've got a few probes queued to the third, that's fine. But if I just click charge, and then just try to squeeze three gateways in right now. That's huge. How good would that be? Like, I, I definitely need this one pylon that I'm building, right? Build that one pylon, but then go three gateways right now. I could get three gateways I down by 5.15 and then have six gateways warping in by six minutes. Instead, look at when my gateways start. So, 5.50 is when I go for my gateways. There's no way that's going to be ready for a later three racks push, right? I also, where's me warp-ins that I talked about? Guys, I'm probing 
I've probed 12 probes on here non-stop. This is not the priority at all, not at all. So we can see some big mistakes going on. Um, I should be warping in Zealots already and chronoing charge. And I don't do that. I also haven't killed a single unit with my Stalkers. Uh, looks like I've killed something worth 100 resources. I feel like that was a Reaper. Yeah, there was. And look at that. I'm not even picking off the Marauders, man. You want to focus the Marauders because you do more damage to them. It's a juicier target than a Marine. But if the Marines are up front, you will just click on them. And uh, yeah, I don't think my battery was even done, right? And then my battery wasn't even done. And I needed to have the battery ready and activate battery the moment he stimmed towards me. So huge mistakes. GG, really well played to Micro Jackson. Kick my ass. Legoland gifting a sub to Juke Zero. High five. Thank you very much for the love. Legoland's also continuing to get something off from Pyro. Oh, hot damn. Thank you so much for the love, everybody. What's up? Hey, Doku, what's up? All right, guys, we didn't quite get Masters 2 there. That's cool. We get one extra game for you guys. Let's go. I've actually lost like three games. They've all been to like four, mostly four, nine, 5K kind of level players. But um, it's good stuff. Oh, we're playing Top Spin. Top Spin played in our tournament the other day, guys. People are discussing Proxy Nexus. What? <laughs> you like a fun mate. It is pig. We're still doing Masters 3, which means we're going very Stalker Zealot heavy. <laughs> That's like five games in M3. Yeah, BDGM. <laughs> Alright guys, you guys know I like the gateway further back, but if you like to put it further forward, go ahead and keep doing that. There's nothing wrong with it. A lot of people, they, they look to learn StarCraft as if there's like a hierarchy of like, you have to do this, you have to do that, this is what you do, this is what you don't do. That's really not a good way to think about learning StarCraft. Learning StarCraft, just think about, you're, you're trying to understand other people's ideas and uh, steal the ones that make a lot of sense to you. So I'm going to kill this guy just because he's in my mineral land and I don't like that. Now this guy, of course, is just checking that I'm not being cannon rushed and then he goes second gateway and onto gas as well. Now, you might be like, there's a probe coming, cannon rush! It's fine. If they come in, that's a normal time, because that's the same time my guy's going into their base. I don't, like, have it memorized to the second or anything, in case you guys are wondering. It's just something that I literally can look at my meme map and go, well, my probe's entering their base. It's normal that their probe's also entering my base. Now, he hasn't done a second chrono, so he could chrono two units out of the gateway, do something a little bit more aggressive. Not the end of the world if that does happen. Um... Rally these third guys on gas. Awesome. So now, you might be wondering why is my probe patrolling like that? Well, check this out, guys. We're looking right now. Where is your second pylon? Because look, mine was kind of late. Now, my opponent top spins is super late, guys. Oh no, there it is. It's finished in the corner. So you go sentry, uh, sentry, warp gate, and now a stalker. We get the pylon on the low ground. And he is chrono boosting. Okay, so what we can do, guys, is we can go and put a pylon down here. And then we pretend we're going that way, but we're actually going off to the top left, okay? And, oh! He is actually gonna do that. Now, I'm gonna let that pylon finish, because I didn't actually see any units come out yet. I think he's going for adepts, guys. So we're gonna go third and fourth stalker here. Get that nexus down now. We want to keep the sentry on the high ground. The reason for that, I think, is kind of obvious. And let's bring another probe over. Oh, he's actually not shading towards my base, which is interesting. So I can put the nexus down. Okay. Okie dokie, guys. Cancel that. Let's get the Twilight Council. This is the most virginal build. And what are we doing, guys? We're looking for where those adepts are, okay? And we'll 
gonna split. We're gonna grab this stalker and go over here. Get the shield battery. And we're just gonna get that hallucination across the map. I didn't really feel like it's an all-in, which is, I guess, part of why I uh, am playing kind of a bit greedier against this. Okay, so that guy's gonna chase him. These guys can chase him. Oh, I let it die. That's a bummer. All right, guys, what am I doing right now? Let's quickly look through. Does he have an expansion? I assume he does, but I didn't actually check. I have no idea if he's going Stargate or not. So he's going Stargate. He's probing up his Nexus. All good, all good. Okay, so we've got two Stalkers in the main. The rest are in the natural. Um, now, we were meant to go more sentries for more scouting. That is something we were doing in Masters 3, wasn't it? I forgot. Okay, we're doing more macro-centric version, aren't we? Let's make some more sentries. <laughs> okay, we're gonna quickly send that across. And remember, we do like to take a very quick third. I think I'll just take this one out here. I often take the other one. I don't know why I take the front one so often in this matchup. Those stalkers there, these guys here. Let's take one more sentry, more stalkers. And keep building probes. I just want to check when his uh, third base comes up. It's one of the main things. And we'll just bring that probe home. We've already got the pylon up, so that's all good. Twilight Council down yet? Yes, yeah, so he's gone Twilight Forge. These are all signs of a normal macro game, guys. Ah! Oh! oh, I really wanted to die so bad, man. But I didn't quite get it. Let's try and make plus one get upgraded. Now, the cool thing here, guys, is because he went that oracle, I think we can be aggressive as well, right? Now, once you get the third down, of course, we can get third gas. Um, now, because he's gone Stargate, it would be a really good idea to just get four gateways up before the robo. Just a real slight adjustment to the build, guys. And um, the reason is he's gone Stargate, he can't go DTs. So I'm just going to go straight 5 gate, actually. Go even more aggressive here. Uh, we don't really need that extra pylon. So we're just going to keep trying to warp in Stalkers here, guys. And I want to go cancel his third base, if that makes sense. Okay, we will build another pylon now. Let's try and get plus one. Keep building probes. So this is kind of like a not that committed timing attack is how I want to describe this to you guys, okay? Because it's just five gateways, it's nothing crazy. But you can see, oh, he's actually got a good section of units himself, so that's cool. Let's just make the robo. Okay. And we'll just keep, all right. Because of, of that, I'm like, oh, this is actually not gonna do anything, is it? Let's try and take the fourth down here as well. We'll continue our normal plan, guys. Let's get charged. As much as I do like attacking, and I see he's got a lot of stalkers, so, you know, I'd like to do it. Remember we made a rule last week, uh, which same Masters 3 feed if you're watching on YouTube, but that rule was basically, hey, make sure you actually move out with your stalkers. You don't need to necessarily do anything with them other than just see if you can grab a pick off and then, you know, kill a unit and run away kind of thing. But even that can can be nice just because it gets you in that forward position. Now, I'm going to drop that fourth, which is, of course, very greedy. I am the voice. I am the See if we can, you know, pick off some probes or something. I don't know. Just, just, just even that is going to scare him a little bit. And guys, we're only on five gateways, so we do need to go one, two, three, four. Let's go up to like nine gates. Gonna patrol these guys. And what are we doing, guys? We're gonna go into mass zealot behind this, aren't we? Because this stalker squad, and this stalker squad's actually so small, guys. 11 stalkers. It's not really enough to do much. And he chases me, doesn't quite get a stalker. Let's make some observers. And we can also grab most of that. So I'm looking for a fourth base that I can cancel, guys. But I do want a few more... Oh, hello. 
Okay, guys. Well. Engaging the enemy. Okay. Your probes are under attack. Your probes are under attack. We know our fury. You require. Okay, everything else goes over here. You must place that in a power field. I like Okay. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to grab a bunch of zealots like this, and we're going to grab those with an observer and send them out the left side, okay? And then what are we doing? All we're doing, just warping in lots of zealots. Making a fake arc on accidentally. Making an armor upgrade. Don't know what that was. Was that... Is that Dark Templar or something? What? I don't know what just happened. And then we can attack the natural while those zealots distract. Awesome. So what you want to do here, guys, is you want to take a fifth base so your economy keeps scaling and get some forward pylons. And we also want to build some pylons there as well. Whoa! That was totally a mistake, guys. That was a misclick. I meant to force field there. Oh my god. That's so bad. Jesus Christ. Not good, not good. <laughs> oh my lord. Okay. Try to just mass stalkers to recover here, guys, because this was a really bad tra ta I, I, I tabbed to the wrong unit, if you guys are wondering how that happened. Basically just tabbed to the wrong unit, so big mistake, huge mistake. Um, did we get any observers out? Let's try to do that. We're just making stalkers because I figure I can micro them. So I'll try and take a fifth base up there, but more important is just obviously making units right now. Got the disruptor. I don't think there's any more where that came from, thankfully. And the zealots are going in, so they're gonna cause him a lot of problems. And he's just getting overwhelmed. Holy shit, guys, he really made me play a really good game. Topspin just kicked some ass there. And I kind of went off build a little bit. I realized that because I've been thinking so much last night about what I'm gonna be doing when I start Masters 2, that I, I kind of was like, wait, shit. And I actually forgot about the quick forge and the quick robo for a little bit, but it actually also made sense to skip them, which is why I got a little bit confused because I was like, how much am I going off build and how much is an intelligent reaction that I should actually be doing and explaining? And obviously we got a little confused, but remember guys, third gas, and then we just keep probing, 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 Zealot Stalker and just keep taking bases, taking bases. After plus two, I like to get plus one because it's so much faster to upgrade. Then we go back to plus three and we try to just win with Zealot Stalker. And remember what I did guys, when I split the Zealots off for the run by, I gave them an observer. If you don't do that, they can just defend your zealot run buys with DTs. So always do that and always try to leave an extra observer sitting outside your natural. And that way you won't get caught by crazy random DTs walking into your base and, and absolutely annihilating you. So even though that came in and did some damage to me, I was able to react pretty quickly and not lose the game. And this is why we always just use the robo just for observers for safety. We're not building immortals because they're slow and cumbersome. The stalker zealot army is much faster. We can run around, blink in, blink out, run away with the charge lots. The immortals are good for building up a big ball and we're going to be doing immortals and archons and those slower units added into the army when we're playing masters 2 but we're not there just yet so let's go back a little bit in this replay because I, I think this was pretty complicated there's a few subtleties here that i did not talk to you guys about massive thanks maha legoland gifted a sub before as well we appreciate that everybody all right what do you do with gas building up during zealot spam says me well I, I don't think i had a crazy amount of gas this game did i yeah, because the thing is, you're, you're building stalkers, you're making upgrades, you've only got three gases mining. So that's the whole the whole thing there, as well as observers, right? 
So upgrades plus stalkers is enough, and um, the the transition which is in the build is you drop a DT shrine. If this game, if, if I go to like five bases and the game's going on, I can't win without stalker. I will add a DT shrine and get blink as well. But three gas is not going to give you a lot of gas. Even if you float like 800, 900 gas, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Hopefully I don't turn out like oh you mean because vibe just got a bit burnt out on bronze to GM. A lot of people were like trolling him and stuff and sniping him constantly. Yeah. So guys, I let this get a little chaotic early. Um, part of this is because I'm so used to defending with two stalkers, uh, not a stalker sentry. So I think the biggest mistakes I made were I forgot to hallucinate right on 75. And that was something which would have confirmed, hey, there's a Stargate. Just made sure I got a shield battery down in my main. I had stalkers at home. And uh, other than that, we're just probing. And then we should be going Twilight Forge, of course, right? Should be going Twilight Council, Shield Battery at the Natural. Forge doesn't need to go down immediately, because it's obviously very early for Twilight. Forge comes down gradually after that. And then we want to go third Nexus and then into four gateways. And then the Robo in the third gas after that. Okay, so that's the part of the build which I got a little bit confused about, which was I was like, I was like, dude, okay, I know I want to get a quick third off two gates because I've got enough hallucinations to go, hey, he's just macroing, no signs of aggression. I can get away with this two gate into third base. But then we go four gates straight away, then the robo and the third gas, and that's the way to do it. Now, obviously, if someone does proxy a DT shrine, um, this sort of build is weak against it. And I've talked a bit about how you need to actually pay attention to, to that. If I didn't see a Stargate, guys, and I only saw two Stalkers with my hallucination, I would have immediately been worried about that. And I probably wouldn't have built a forge. I would have built a robo instead. Why is that? Well, I know he's committing to economy, but I don't know where his gas is going. If he doesn't have a Stargate, that's 150 gas, an Oracle, another 150 gas. Where are his sentries? Where are his extra stalkers? He's built Adepts to start, which is a low gas unit. He's only got two more stalkers. Shit, dude, I've got a sentry, two stalkers, and I'm about to warp in uh, two more sentries and then two more stalkers after that. Where the, the hell is his gas? So that would, even though I don't normally scout for the proxy, if I see that my opponent has no gas invested, then we go look for the proxy DT shrine, and that's really big. Why would you not put the observer in static mode in front of your natural? So you can move it around. So I'm literally just rallying observers out there, and then I'll grab one from there, add it to my zealot run by. Grab one, bring it with my army. If you plan to leave it there all game, then put it on static mode, go for it. But it all comes down to what you want to do with your units, right? There's no, there's no hard and fast rules, so as always, I don't really like the, the why not questions um, because it, it kind of dodges the true intention of it. Like, if, you're, if you say, hey, I leave a, an Observer there all game to be safe. If I leave an Observer there all game to safe, I, I just leave it on static defense mode. Is, is there a reason to not do that? And I'd say, in that case, the only reason is because when they run past, you're going to have to unsiege it. It's just extra micro because then the DT runs past and then if you don't kill it straight away, you got to unsiege it and move it. So... It gives you extra vision, though. It gives you extra warning. I don't know what's better. It's whatever you prefer. I mean, Vibe did a thousand bronze to GMs. Um, once again, just to reiterate, the reason I don't like why not questions, guys, is is it's you guys are, are being... and It's unintentional, but it's basically the, the Twitch chat is being selfish about ex kind of expecting me to be in their head, which I'm not. So whenever you guys ask questions, if you can just add some more context and info, it actually helps me understand where you're coming from. Because there's a thousand ways to look at anything in StarCraft. And I find that why not questions? They just force me to really put my brain into overdrive to understand what the question is really asking. So essentially it's it's unfair to me because if I let that go, people will keep asking, why don't you build carriers? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And it's always like, there's so many layers of interpretation to get to what they're really asking. So I just ask that people put a bit more detail into their questions because they put a little bit more detail or context or explanation of what they're thinking. And suddenly we're having a discussion rather than, just, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever hung out with any toddlers recently. I was babysitting my nephew and niece on the, on the weekend. They're one and a half and three and a half. And I'm like this. And they're like, why? Little three and a half year olds like, why? Doesn't matter what you say, why? why and you're like oh fucking shit so basically obviously i'm not saying that when people say why not questions it's it's exactly that but it's kind of it gets in the same vein of like holy shit how do i even answer this question you know um so yeah uh why yeah <laughs> why should we not do the super aggressive blink 
<laughs> I was honestly, you know what I was gonna do, guys? I was I was trying to place one more force field there to make sure it was see. To, to, I was trying to force field his stalkers again, and then I was actually gonna pull up his main ramp and fight up there. And um and yeah yeah, I literally like gave up the amazing position that I got. Oh, so so dumb, so dumb. Day nine says the same thing. <laughs> Just catching up on the questions in chat. Engaging the enemy. I'd drop a Templar Archives as a gas dump. Why wouldn't you do it? I only have three gas geysers. I don't have the gas for it. If you take more gases, you can do it, but we're playing a very mineral focused style. Archons are immobile. We're playing a very mobile style. So let's talk at the moment. You start making Archons and Immortals, your army becomes immobile. It becomes more of a brick. At the moment, we are playing like a light cavalry style. Think of it that way. If you guys know anything about, about you know, war, ancient war and history and stuff, think of this as light cavalry style. You're, you're playing Mongol style. You're hitting where they're not ready, you're burning down their villages behind, and then you're luring them out into the open, and then surrounding and crushing. Oh, Zombie Grub was in the chat before. Thank you, Zombie Grub, for permitting the term perv. I can't believe the stupid auto mod. It's so annoying. I turned the auto mod level up once, and it removed all of our allowed words. What's up, Jason? You're really good at explaining the why not question. I banned them. <laughs> it's taken many thousands of rants for me to get to this point. It literally was just the other day I had a shower thought where I was like, you know what a better way of explaining this is? The why not question thing is that it's it's just unfair to me because it, it doesn't give enough information and it kind of asks me to be in your head. Whereas if you guys just give a bit more info and context, then we have a discussion rather than, uh, you know, why don't do this? Why don't do that? I think that the, to the toddler analogy is good, isn't it? I think I'll use the toddler analogy from now on. I, I like the toddler analogy. I think I'll use that from now on. What MMR are we at? We are just shy of Masters 2, guys. You've, you've, you've taken care of kids. You realize why you don't want kids again? I actually, I really enjoy hanging around little, little kids, just in small doses. I like, I like, you know, it's fun to teach them stuff, to see how their little brains work and stuff. I think it's pretty cool, but yeah. Yeah, we're a bee's dick off Masters League. Yeah, that's one way of putting it, chat. Okay, guys, so check it out. So once we got to this kind of stage, I did ease off my probing. And why did I do that? Well, number one, at this point, I didn't know my opponent didn't have a fourth base, okay? I, I didn't know that he had taken a fourth and was playing 75, 75 probes? Jesus, people are so greedy these days. That's insane. He's just sitting in his corner. 75 probes top spin. I thought I was being greedy. I'm at 58. What? Holy shit balls. Oh my god. Wow. This is why you check your replays, guys. Uh, no wonder I had more army. That's like double the army supply here. We've got like almost equal stalkers and then I have 20 zealots on top of it. Holy crap. So greedy. And he's gone six gases and he's trying to go disruptors as well off it. Yeah, no, it's just too defensive. I think Topspin played really good macro game, but it's it's just the, the classic thing, which everyone's doing at the moment because they see pros do it and they don't understand how good the pros are at scouting and reacting when they do this. Which is like, guys, if you if you, you be greedy and then you turn it into aggression. Greed into greed into greed turns a small window of I could get killed, but then I've turned it into army and I'm safe and confident and I can go kill my opponent. It turns it into a giant, it's not even a window, it's an unfinished floor of a building where you just, you could fall off the side of the building at any moment, right? There's not even a guardrail or anything. Like that's, that's what, and, and this is what I, I see a lot of players do. So I think Topspin, if he even stopped like eight probes less than this, and then just was like actually on pure stalker and pushing with his stalkers. I wouldn't mind it so much, but because he's so in his corner of the map, just sitting defensive and relying on cannons and batteries and stuff, it's like, dude, yeah, if I just headbutt into your army, into battery overcharge and cannons, and you keep blinking back and using disruptors, you're going to kill me. But what if I attack multiple areas? You can't battery overcharge everywhere. You can't blink everywhere. You know, zealots are such an easy unit to use. So that's, that's why we did it. So anyway, 
outside of knowing what we now know looking at the replay, everybody, um, yeah, essentially, um, oh, did Dot just create a, a bot command? She says, rule, try to avoid asking, did you just create a rule there, Dot? A, a, a nightbot command, Dot? Definitely copy paste that into a nightbot command, Dot the legend. Um, anyway, long story short, guys, grab Zealots, given them Observer, because we knew it's no it's TTs, push one side with those while the Stalker army hits the other side. Obviously, if this army, like, sentries aren't very emo very mobile either, but if I commit to more Immortals and Archons, my army gets even less mobile. I don't mind losing these sentries too badly. And basically, I just attack two places at once. Um, I should have already started building pylons forward on the map or built a warp prism. I have a robo. I should be building a warp prism. This is not PVT where I skip the robo the whole time. So we should have had a warp prism coming out here and maybe built a pylon or two on the left and then we could have done some good stuff. Now, this was obviously a really bad zealot attack because we kind of sat in vision for a few seconds. But notice we just run away. So you lure his army over, and then the other army goes in. And then I'm like, okay, I know he'll be reacting. So these zealots, they move back in. This is the classic one-two punch. And I go, hey, you know what? I didn't see any Archons in his army. Let's force field him out. And he's going to blink forward, and that's going to be awesome. Now, problem here. I haven't put any zealots in his main. If I sent enough zealots in to overwhelm a cannon, I don't know what's in there. Maybe there's a cannon and a battery, but if it's just one cannon, if I send five zealots in, they could potentially kill the cannon and every probe in this base while this is happening, right? But what's going to happen, guys, is he's going to blink across here. And the problem I'm going to run into is, yes, I can blink back my units, but the problem is if I aim move, the zealots and the stalkers on the back are all fighting buildings. So in this scenario, I would have been better if I'd already moved these stalkers to be here and these stalkers and sentries here, and I would have a really good firing arc. And then I could do one, two, three more force fields and just pop a few stalkers in front the rest of his stalkers are all trapped, and I'm blinking back my weak stalkers while the Nexus is getting killed. And I know I'm doing critical damage on the left at the same time. So I know I'm in a pretty good spot. And guys, by the way, he did warp in DTs to defend here. The Observer killed him there. So this was obviously an absolute disaster, but I think I had enough army and killed enough probes that it was okay. Now notice I didn't probe up behind this, guys, because I said, I've just killed a ton of your opponent. I've killed two bases worth of probes, and I kill your Nexus. Actually, even more than two bases, because I killed some probes here. Notice I ran the zealots in and shift quick the probes, because I didn't want to waste time fighting the cannon battery. All I do is make zealots and stalkers behind this, and that's it. I'm just like, zealots, stalkers, zealots, stalkers, zealots, stalkers, because I'm on four base minerals. I could probably transfer some more probes from my natural in a moment, as it's going to mine out soon on some of these patches, right? And I just know he's got to counterattack, because he's down to three bases versus four. And he's probably down to about 45 workers. 38 is actually what it is. So I knew just get enough army up. I've traded my whole army off for economy damage. My army's less than his. I just need to catch up on army. And then get ahead on army and we're good. And I try to buy time for myself. Because I know he's going to grab everything and desperately try to kill me. And if he's going to desperately try to kill me with everything he's got, sending just a small section of units to buy time is really good. Because that distracts his micro. So we can blink forward and kill a disruptor that's at the front of his army. It means we can blink back behind backwards and pull behind batteries and cannons and overcharge and putting a lot of micro into focus firing things on the front isn't going to be as easy because he's busy microing at home and losing economy at home so that's something to keep in mind so i'm not going to commit 15 zealots to a counter attack and i would argue even five is maybe too many but even if it was just a few zealots going in it's going to be huge and potentially if he does a big zealot warp in eight zealots warp in to deal with it what would i do i'd just bring those zealots home to help defend and my 10 supply of zealots has basically forced him to warp in 16 supply at home. Whereas if he had a prism, he could have warped in that 16 supply on the front. So this is just a general good rule of if your opponent's going for a desperate all in and you can spare just a couple of units, just a small distraction, makes it even harder for them to micro that one push, which they need to micro perfectly to kill you. So we managed to get the win there after a little bit of a dicey early game, um, early and mid game, and some really good greedy play. And guys, we just got masters too. Why don't I have a promotion screen? Oh, is the fucking season ended? Shit balls. Because the season's ending in, in a day or two, isn't it? Hold on a second, guys. I'm going to activate my hacking screen. Whoa! Whoa! 
Oh, we got Masters 2! Yes, this is real! It's real Masters 2! Yes, my name is Mr. L from Clan's Dream! Yes! Ah, oh, I hacked into the Matrix. We're in Masters... Masters 2! Woo! 